Was his foundry this morning? Did you find the old pinch in the air? No, what, I think what's happened is the... Um, the boiler timer, is it? Yeah. Or are we out of oil, do you think? No, well, I don't think so. I think... Don't know. The Why don't we flip? Forward, do you know you where see? the switch is? I do, I do, but I'm not touching it. Apparently John Breslin knows how to do that. Does he? And no one trusts me to go at it. All right. But the weather's lovely, right? But if you listen to the national weather forecast, Lee, you think the whole country's covered in rain and wind, and yeah. we've had reasonably nice weather up here. Wasn't it great on Easter Sunday? Do you know? Let me think, Easter Sunday. That's a couple of days ago. Yes. It was lovely because they protected rain. We no, look but at you the see, weather. Not up here, they didn't. But we get skewed weather forecasts. Ah, but on the evening weather on the TV, it said we're going to get rain. But then it was lovely day on Sunday. I never saw Sunday. a drop of rain yesterday. Wasn't it great? Either, all Sunday. Yeah. yeah. And today's going to be good as well. You know? Happy days, boy. Happy now day. all we need is another five degrees. That'd be nice. <laughs> Wouldn't it? Another five degrees. <laughs> well, of, I'm rubbing my hands. Oh, it should be nice. A few yeah. more extra swords on the fire there now. Throw an old turf on there. Yeah, now. You still need the fire. It's nice to get up, though, in daylight. And obviously there's people that start earlier than me do. You probably didn't get up and But it was darker you? this morning. I was expecting with the time difference, right? No, no, my no, no, simple no, no. Wee It brings head. the night forward an hour. I said, God, it's darker now in the morning. I thought, that's, I thought the deal was we have... That'll sort itself out, though. Uh, over time. <laughs> <laughs> over time, literally. <laughs> you only had nice bright evenings. It's lovely. It was no good to me. You want to go to, want to, go to bed for 9 o'clock? At 4 o'clock. Blackout blinds, blackout roller blinds, curtains, you name it. But you had a nice Easter. Did I? Yeah. Ate loads of chocolate. Do you know what? I was handed six um, dairy milk in a box, right? But they were handed in a plastic bag yesterday when me and Noah was sitting on the couch anyway. But anyway, um, I found when I was going to bed, right, I found the bag, right, and there's three chocolates left. I didn't need them. But what did you do? You started eating them. You didn't need them, but you wanted them, Gooch. No, I didn't want them, but I just ate them because they were there. So I've seen enough of chocolate. Yeah. You know, I don't like thing. chocolate anyway, so we'll Even see. talking about it today, that's over. That's all <laughs> yesterday, like, you know. What's the next thing? It's just the summer now, isn't it? We've yeah. had St. Patrick's Day, Easter, now it's the summer. What's next? Summer. Summer. Y- Friday is going to be a good day for you. Two and a half grand. I know we're late for news. Two and a half grand for you. Yes. That's I call. have to catch up and all that kind of stuff because I disengaged from work for Well, the you'll last engage week, really. pretty quick. So, you're on, okay. You just hit the button there now and you're away. Good luck. <laughs> Lee, have a great one. That's Lee Gooch. He's back with you, of course, tomorrow morning, bright and early, 6.30. Smooth. Okay, it is nine o'clock. It is time for our first news update of the Nine Till Noon show today, and it is a very good morning to Michaela Clark. Thanks, Greg. Good morning. The number of people driving under the influence of drink or drugs has been branded as very disappointing. 140 people were arrested for drink or drug driving between Good Friday and yesterday. Updated figures from Gardaí are due this morning. More officers from the Roads Policing Unit were on patrol as part of the Garda operation, which began last Thursday morning. Three people were killed on the country's roads over the weekend. Sinn Féin's transport spokesperson, South Donegal Deputy Martin Kenny, says drink or drug driving is totally unacceptable. Very disappointing that so many people are clearly using drugs and using alcohol and then getting behind the wheel of a car and driving. And that's reflected in the number of people that were caught over the weekend. So many people are taking chances or taking risks or driving erratically and irresponsibly. And as we can see from that particular statistic, so many people are driving while drunk or under the influence of, of drugs. The Teachers' Union of Ireland is calling for greater investment in education. The latest OECD figures show off 36 countries Ireland spends the lowest percentage of its GDP on education. At second level, this accounts for just 1% of our national wealth, which is just half the OECD average. TUI President David Waters says its annual Congress will today hear calls to provide teachers with adequate supports. Finland and death. 7% of GDP annually into uh, education. We don't even do half that. I mean, I mean, it's, it's staggering. It's quite, it's shameful, really. If we want to improve our education system, and there's lots of lofty ambitions of, of people have these great ideas, but really, you need to reduce class sizes. You need to give teachers the adequate resources to be able to attend to each student's needs. Disorder in Derry yesterday has been condemned. An unnotified parade took place. Petrol bombs were thrown by young people and a van set on fire in the Craigan area. Petrol bombs were also thrown at members of the media. SDLP leader Foyle MP Colm Eastwood says those responsible for yesterday's disorder is the last thing that the community wants or needs. An investigation is now underway. 
Gardaí and Donegal have launched Operation Enable, the multi-agency initiative involving Gardaí, Donegal County Council, the Disabled Drivers Association of Ireland and the Irish Wheelchair Association aims to target the unauthorised use of disabled parking bays and disabled parking permits. The operation, which is underway in the Ballyshannon district, will conclude on Monday, April the 8th. There will also be a focus on other forms of illegal parking within the Ballyshannon district that interferes with or restricts the free movement of people with disabilities or limited mobility mobility. Finally, for weather, mist, fog and any patches of frost will clear this morning. Plenty of dry weather today with a mix of cloud, bright spells and a few showers. Highest temperatures of 10 to 12 degrees. That's all from Highland Radio News for now. We'll be back with news again at 10 o'clock. Until then, good morning. No, this car was diesel. It's not. At the garage, you use the black pump. Diesel. No idea. So we're going to miss the flight, but sun holidays are overrated. All that sun and sand. Who needs it, eh? Or you use the black pump. Diesel. No idea. So. I'll call Allianz Breakdown Assistance. With Allianz Car Insurance, you can also add breakdown assistance. Save 15% when you get a quote online at Allianz.ie. You write it, we underwrite it. Allianz. Allianz PLC is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Standard acceptance criteria, policy conditions and a minimum premium apply. Breakdown assistance is an optional extra and an additional premium applies. And now, it's time for the talk of the North West. The 9 to Noon Show with Greg Hughes on Highland Radio. Hello and a very good morning to you. It is four minutes past nine on this Tuesday, the 2nd of April 2024. And you're very welcome along to the 9 till Noon Show. And we start another week. And as I was saying to Lee there, uh, had a lovely Easter. I hope you did uh, too. And uh, it's good to be back. Thanks to Donald who stood in for me for a couple of days last week. But we are raring to go for this week, albeit a shorter week. 086 60 25,000. The WhatsApp and text number, uh, those lines are open for you right now. Or give us a call on 07 491 25,000. With uh, a lot of people sort of maybe taking some time off or away on holidays, it's hard to know if it's going to be a busy or a quiet show. Often it can be busier when people uh, don't have work if they're ready one and they can just chill out. Let us know what you're doing anyway and stay in touch with us. Uh, I mentioned you can call us, didn't I? Uh, we have Donna Marie and Shenan taking your calls on 07 491 25,000. Or you can email the programme comments at highlandradio.com. And you know what? If you're at home and you don't normally get an opportunity to do so, you can watch the show as well. Uh, if you've got a smart TV or a fire stick or a Google TV, you can open up the YouTube app and just type in Highland Radio Ireland and watch us on your big screen. We're streaming there. We're on Facebook, Highland Hub, Highland News and Sport, and on the X platform as well. All right, an exciting week, as uh, Lee kind of mentioned, but I didn't have all the deets at that stage. Uh, we've got big money uh, to give away later on in the week. I'm going to tell you about that and tell you how you can go about winning that too. Uh, that's all on the way. But let's see what's making the news on this Tuesday morning. Obviously, with it being the Easter holidays, uh, our students are off, but the teachers, many of them, are attending annual conferences. And we'll go to the Irish Independent. More than half of the newly recruited teachers surveyed in a major study said they would consider leaving Ireland to work overseas. The reasons cited are disillusionment, an opportunity to save money and high accommodation costs. The study, conducted by the Teachers Union of Ireland, the TUI, also found that one in three Irish teachers who entered the profession since January 2001, uh, sorry, 2011, took longer than three years to be offered a full hours contract. Incredibly, 95.9%, uh, 99.5% of teachers polled said it would be very difficult to secure new accommodation near where they are currently living if they had to vacate their current address. Some 35% of teachers surveyed said uh, they their new they knew colleagues who had uh, ceased employment at their school due to the accommodation crisis. And an astonishing 78% said they believed Ireland's housing and accommodation crisis had had an adverse effect on the lives of students in their areas. So um, that's what teachers think. On to uh, the Irish Times this morning now. And uh, the government will spend €5 billion Euro accommodating asylum seekers in state-owned properties over coming decades, Minister, uh, ministers have been told. But this will be significantly cheaper than using private sector beds. €5 billion is a big bill. 
Uh, briefing material uh, supplied to ministers last week put the cost of supplying 10,000 beds for asylum seekers over 20 years at £5 billion based on current prices, but argue that buying the same amount of accommodation sourced from the private sector would potentially cost billions more again. Uh, these savings are not expected to accrue for several years, but will increase significantly in a time frame of 15 to 13 years, ministers were told. Under plans brought to government last week by Minister for Integration, Roderick O'Gorman, the government committed to build out a core of accommodation consisting of 14,000 beds in state-owned facilities by 2028. It is expected that 35,000 beds for asylum seekers will be needed by the end of this year. So there are many people out there that would like to see uh, the flow of um, asylum seekers, um, the tap shut off a little bit, if not all, all the way, depending on who you are. Uh, but it's clear the government is planning um, to accommodate many uh, asylum seekers in this country over the coming years. Uh, anyway, that figure is four times the previous commitment made by the Irish government. This is uh, 35 beds for asylum seekers will be needed by the end of this year. That is four times the previous commitment made by the government when it said it would scrap the direct provision system uh, early in the lifetime of the coalition. So how long will this coalition go for? We'll see. Um, the purchasing of... Uh, sorry, the... Um, uh, meetings with independents um, are, are starting around about now. I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, J.K. Rowling is uh, Rowling is on the front of the Irish Daily Mail. J.K. Rowling, obviously one of the most uh, famous authors in the world. She is the lady behind the Harry Potter uh, books, but she has spent uh, much of her time over recent years um, on the issue of transgenderism. And this is relevant now because she lives in Scotland and Scotland has introduced new hate speech laws. And this is of interest to us, of course, too, because uh, hate speech laws are being discussed in this country at the moment. But anyway, J.K. Rowling dared police to arrest her under new hate crime laws in Scotland and Michael McDool is backing her warning of similarly legal chaos to come in Ireland. As the legislation came into force in Scotland, the Harry Potter author fired off a flurry of incendiary social media posts declaring that a string of trans women were in fact men. And former Attorney General Mr McDool has warned that proposed Irish hate speech legislation cannot be allowed to cause the problems being witnessed in Scotland. He told the Irish Daily Mail, J.K. Rowling, uh, she is being told to misgender somebody. Uh, she is being told that to misgender somebody can amount to hate speech to insist on calling them uh, on their original gender. So um, J.K. Rowling, effectively, um, she's in a spat with a few uh, high-profile uh, transgender women, uh, but she accuses them of being men, that they are men, which is misgendering them, that they're cosplaying women or they're dressing up uh, in what they imagine a woman is. Uh, and, of course, this is um, causing a lot of anger amongst that community. Uh, Scotland's Hate Crime Act introduced offences for threatening or... And I'll read this because, as I say, it could be relevant here soon. Uh, Scotland's Hate Crime Act introduced offences for threatening or abusive behaviour which is intended to stir up hatred, which in Scotland uh, previously applied only to race and brings with it possible seven-year prison sentences. Uh, Ms Rowling, a prominent gender critic, uh, included transgender campaigners and other individuals in her tweets referring to them as women. But she ended the thread by saying, April fools, only kidding, obviously the people mentioned in the above tweets aren't women at all, but men, every last one of them. Um, and her concern is, um, well, she highlighted some people who, who claimed to be women and were then found to be taking pictures of uh, girls and women in women's spaces and so on and so forth. You can read her uh, tweets on X there. Right, the Irish Daily Mirror, uh, Fine Gael leader Simon Harris is arranging meetings this week with independent TDs who he hopes will back him in a pending doll vote to become Taoiseach. Deputies Dennis Nochton, Peter Fitzpatrick, Noel Grealish, uh, Matt Shanahan and Cathy Berry confirmed they expected to meet Mr Harris while Tipperary TD Michael Larry might also do. Uh, confirming he would talk to the Fine Gael leader, Mr Grealish said, yes, I will be meeting 
him before the vote next Tuesday. Mr Nocton also confirmed to RTE that he would be engaging with Mr Harris, saying in a text, yes, we'll be meeting him. But what to what end? And again, will they be uh, given little incentives to vote um, in favour of Simon Harris? And I'll say the same thing that I said at the time of a no-vote confidence. How much is it going to cost uh, the taxpayer? Uh, again, I'm very much of the opinion that these deals, if deals are struck, should be made public. And they should be made public before the vote as well, so we know exactly what an independent has secured uh, in order to um, go against what they might want to do uh, and actually vote in favour of Simon Harris. The bill for the last round of negotiations uh, was published not so long ago and um, it should be published, I think, at the time of the negotiation. Mr Fitzpatrick said he had spoken to Mr Harris on the phone and would be seeing him before the door return. Deputy Shanahan stated, I'm looking forward to hearing him uh, reiterate his significant concerns to address the many stalled investments in Waterford. Now, maybe that's what independents do. You know, they, they broker to get stuff into their own area. Uh, but obviously, uh, we heard there from Deputy Shanahan, he's quite clear on it, he'll want to know what Simon Harris is going to deliver for Waterford before he decides to back him. Is that the way politics should be, though? I don't know. What do you think? 0860 25,000? Or maybe fair play to uh, these deputies for securing stuff for their areas. I don't know. Guardi have warned that motorists speeding or drink driving is still a scourge on our roads despite the frightening death toll over recent months. This is the Irish Daily Star. The carnage on the country's roads continued over the weekend. Three more deaths since Guardi launched their bank holiday roads enforcement operation. A cyclist in his 60s became the latest victim to die when he was struck by a car in Kildare on Sunday. On Saturday, a 17-year-old died after he was hit by a vehicle on the N17 in County Mayo and on Saturday on the same stretch of road that killed three members of a family just days before. Claire Kavanagh, just 33, who was just weeks away from celebrating her first wedding anniversary, died on the N24 in Kill uh, Sheelan on Friday. So what is going on on our roads? I mean, obviously, you know, the Guardi are uh, out there heavy with the road safety message. Um, clearly, it, it, there must be other factors as well. Obviously, you know, there's, we can drive more safely, but that doesn't mean that anyone, uh, that any of the, the collisions that we've witnessed of late are, are down to unsafe driving. You know, I'm not suggesting that for a second, but is there something else going on here? I heard one of the guards at the weekend talking of, nationally talking of stick to the speed limit. Maybe it's, you know, we shouldn't stick to the speed limits, stay well under the speed limit. I don't know. Um, finally, to the Irish Sun this morning, the excise duty increase on fuel will see people heading up to Northern Ireland to buy diesel or petrol, it's been warned. Uh, petrol went up by four cent per litre and diesel saw a uh, three cent a litre hike yesterday. Irish Road Haulage Association President Ger Highland said the price of fuel in the north is now uh, on a par or cheaper than it is in here, the south, which will encourage fuel tourism. He yesterday said that we use approximately 14 million litres of fuel a week here in Ireland. And I'm sure some people out there probably already uh, are thinking about uh, going shopping, not just for petrol and diesel, uh, but for other things. Uh, but it's been a funny old um, Easter weekend. I mean, we know how bad things are in terms of the cost of living and what have you. But things are just going up and up. The government, of course, increased uh, diesel, uh, the tax on petrol and diesel. Now, uh, you're lucky if you get it for under 180, 175, that kind of money. Uh, of course, the price of drink has gone up. The price of a pint went up uh, over the last few days. Because of these sort of um, the way the broadband phone company suppliers have it all set up. There is an increase that can happen mid-contract. So your the cost of your TV, your broadband services uh, potentially went up as well. And also health insurance has gone up. So what a weekend. You, you take time off at the weekend and all of those things happen over the weekend and your paycheck or whatever income you have, however you might get it, uh, goes less and uh, less further. Or it doesn't go as far as it used to. OK, uh, stay in touch with us, will you? 0860 25000, 0860 25000. That's the WhatsApp and text number. Or give us a call on 074 91 25000. It is the Nintel Noon Show. Daily newspapers are courtesy of Kelly Centra and Diner, Mountaintop Letter Kenny, winner of Best Family Dining at the Highland Radio Hospitality Awards. Your specialty is quality tiles, bathroom suites and wooden floors. Who is the best range of tiles in Donegal? Crawford Tiles. The best wood flooring? Crawford Tiles. The best bathroom suites? Crawford. 
Crawford Tiles. Five day bathroom refits? Crawford Tiles. And who's been tampering with my questions? That'll be me. Crawford Tiles Castle Finn. That'll be them. 07491 43942. Column here from Sweeney's Home Value Builders Providers, Lettermack Award and Derry Big. Are you starting a new build or planning a renovation anytime soon? Why not give us a call today for quotation for all your building needs? Whether it's steel or insulation, timber or slates, we have it all at Sweeney's Builders Providers, Lettermack Award and Derry Big. Call 074 95 44 114. And now with delivery all across Donegal, at Sweeney's Builders Providers, we have it all. Virgin Media is bringing Ireland's best broadband to more and more homes. Big homes, little homes, outhouses, haunted houses, big gaffs in the country, non-bouncy castles, number 16, Oxbow Lake Houses, the house with all the cats. Get two gig full fibre broadband with 99.9% reliability from Virgin Media. It's playtime. T's and C's apply. See virginmedia.ie. Subject to availability. Ireland's best broadband. See virginmedia.ie forward slash proof. Refresh your shoe wardrobe with the latest arrivals from Green Shoes. Bringing you the latest styles from top brands such as Riker, Birkenstock and Wonders. Also, New Balance, Bugatti, XTI and many more. Step into style this season with Green Shoes, Market Square, Letterkenny Shopping Centre and Fulcara or at greenshoes.com. One for all and shop LK cards accepted. Now, you're very welcome back. We're joined on the programme by Emma, who some of you may know as the wee Donegal Mammy. Emma, how are you getting on? How are you, Greg? I'm good. Good to have you on the programme, Emma. So, uh, you've arranged a meeting for uh, tomorrow evening, is it? Yes. Okay. Right. And it's in relation to the to the hospital. Give us the backstory. Like, what have you been hearing? What's been told to you that makes you think that this is uh, so important? Well, I have children with complex mental needs, as you know, Greg. You and I have discussed the health service many times. Um, but um, recently, we've been talking about. You know, um, paramedics have been reaching out. They've been saying about uh, the wait times. Um, cover when people are off on annual leave or sick um, which is affecting obviously response times and things like that um, then waiting for to hand off their patients uh, because of lack of beds um, nurses talking about being absolutely you know you know yourself the situation in A&E um, triaging and trying to get through triage they're doing their very best but they can't bring anybody through if there's no space to bring them through. Um, and then patients saying that, you know, someone like a girl saying to me, her father was waiting 19 hours. Um, this is a pensioner sitting in a chair waiting 19 hours. I myself was in any last night with my own child. And um, I, I was speaking to a mother whose daughter um, was supposed to be, she's an eight-year-old regard, she was supposed to be getting transferred. Then they couldn't do the transfer to Derry, but there was no bed, and this wee eight-year-old was, was, was lying across two chairs with a blanket over because there was no trolleys. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and I mean, th- th- this mother is not actually from Donegal. She's from down the country, and she was, you know, rightly she was upset. Um, but there was nothing available. It's not like they just decided, oh, we're not giving it to you. Mm. There was not, there was nowhere for the three years to go until a decision was made as to whether she needed to be admitted or whatever it may be. But rightly so, I suppose, as mother's from down the country and she was saying, you know, her exact words to me was, this is 2024 and my child is lying on two chairs with a blanket over. Yeah. And it's just, and, and you see that, you know, I mean, and we don't even, it's not even just what people are saying. I mean, look at the statistics. Donegal last year was ranked the eighth worst for overcrowding. Mm-hmm. You know, 11 out of the 12 months, I get very little sleep as a family here. So when I'm awake in the little hours, that's where I would do a lot of my research. And 11 out of the 12 months, I've seen it myself. This isn't the, the staff making this up. 11 out of the 12 months, it was reported on the media that Letter Kenny was under severe pressure. Mm that there was overcrowding, there was people admitted that had no bed. I mean, in a, in a year, for 2023, 5,300 people were admitted to Lettigan Hospital that didn't have a bed. Yeah. They were admitted but had, had no access to a bed. 
And then we had the letter from the GPs last year, 78 GPs, I'm sure you, you know you covered that, mm-hmm. um, and, and the consultants saying that they're on their knees. And like um, the par- one of the paramedics this week was talking to me, he said that for any shown on a bank holiday weekend this weekend, they were assigned one ambulance. It's now, any shown is the size of county allows. Any shown is like my own daughter had to go in an ambulance because her contact medical needs the previous week. And it took two ambulance crews because she has complex medical needs. And one, now one of the ambulances had to leave because there was a cardiac arrest. Absolutely, I could completely understand that. They had to prioritise. But if there was only one ambulance on on a bank holiday weekend to cover any shown, what happens if two people have a cardiac arrest? And also, too, on this top is of what that, I was thinking. there's another figure as well to, to throw in there, too. 1,200, uh, sorry, I think it's the figure off the, well, I think it's around 1,250 patients left the emergency department without receiving treatment. Um, Absolutely, yeah, because that was just, they're that, sitting there. That was just from January to May of this year. Uh, sorry, of last year. Yes. Yeah, and, 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 and you know, I, it was said to me that this week when I when I called this, this meeting this week for elected representatives, somebody said to me this week, didn't you do a meeting like that before? And I said, yeah, I did. I did this four years ago, just over four years ago before the general election. And I said, and isn't it a shocking indictment mm. that I have to do this again? Because at the end of the day, I am a family carer, and it's, that's always the thing. You see, it's always the family carers or the people with need complex needs. It's usually people who are in the system quite a lot mm-hmm. that have to say, "Listen, here, hold on a minute." And like we are doing, <laughs> we have enough to do. I don't mean that to be rude, but we do. But we do these things then because you, you say to yourself, "I'm not fighting it anymore." Do you know what? No. I'm just going to... But then you look at your own child. Like my own child with, with autism sat for eight hours in a chair. And any, You know what I mean? And she's, she's quite far into the spectrum. She sat for eight hours in a chair. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And the thing is, I appreciate that for actually eight hours, though, is not a bad wait time. You know what I mean? Because I, there have been times where I've been up there and and, and my daughter's been on... My, my older daughter with much more complex medical needs would have been on her trolley for 26 hours. You know what I mean? Um, and, so and just the one thing to Emma, uh, because obviously I cover a lot of health stuff on this program, but I'm also, you know, I'm from here, so I'm out and about, and sometimes yeah. I do engage with with staff up there, and a lot of them say, you know, a lot of the staff would say, listen, thanks for. Uh, thanks for highlighting what you do. It's a tough place to work and all that kind of stuff. And then others sort of think that now and again you come across a member of staff who thinks that we're criticising the staff. But no, I, I, I'm yeah. at pains to point this out and you not, have... This is about supporting staff. And this is also not... This is not yeah. in any way criticising the staff. The nurse that dealt with my daughter's autism, she was absolutely lovely. She actually went out of her way to try and find a quiet area for us to sit in. Do you know what I mean? Because she knew that my child didn't do well with mm-hmm. crowds and noise. She did say, you know, I'm going to highlight the fact that this regard has special needs. The doctor seen us, in fairness, quite sharpish, but they had to refer on to another doctor mm-hmm. um, in a different department. This is not about criticising the staff at all. Mm-hmm. The staff up there... Are, and, and I'm not just saying that they they really are amazing. They're lovely, and they're they're lovely people. They are doing the best they can. But you take it in Australia, the triage system in Australia, a nurse will. Tri- I mean, people wonder why our nurses are going to Australia. In Australia, a nurse will triage four patients, and then she'll rotate. Okay, so she will triage four patients, and then she'll rotate back out into the emergency department, and another nurse will then go and triage four patients. Okay. Then what I've been told, what I've been told is that in Medicare, it's 50 patients before they rotate. Well, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Now, that's what I've been told by, by paramedic, that it's 50 patients mm-hmm. that they rot- before they can rotate. So, I mean, it's even like we see it here. It's the primary care as well that is, that's leaking in to any. Because there are, like you take it, and a lot of, of the doctor surgeries we see here, there's signs saying one appointment, one problem. Okay? Uh, maximum appointment time, 10 minutes. 
Okay? Mm-hmm. So, hiring under God, is it, and that's not the GP's fault again, it's to do with the volume of patients and the lack of, of support and the lack of GPs. How is somebody supposed to do a full assessment and find out what's wrong in 10 minutes? Unless it's just a viral infection or something like that, but if it is something more complex. Do you know what I mean? In Australia, mm-hmm. they're assigned 20 minutes. Like So, for example, if somebody goes into a GP here and they have a, a chronic mental health issue, right? In Australia, if somebody goes in with a chronic mental health condition, the GP is assigned 45 minutes for that patient mm-hmm. if it's a chronic mental health condition, and they are paid extra because the Australian government have realised that if somebody goes in with a mental health emergency, that it's going to take longer for that doctor to assess. So what they do is they say, OK, you see that patient for 45 minutes and we'll actually pay you for two patients. Whereas here, the GPs are supposed to do everything in 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. And then people are saying, I can't get a GP's appointment. I can't get a GP's appointment because the volume of people, and the, I mean, we have a lot of locums and they're very good, don't get me wrong. It's, as again, this is not a slight in GPs or, or practice nurses. It's to do with the, the lack of support for these people. Well, look, at I mean, there, and the listen, lack it's, of support it, then. It's basic maths, I mean, you can't increase the population by 8,000. Um, and not then also increase services, you know. And that's not a, that's not. I'm not making any commentary about people coming into the county. That's not my point. But the point is, is you can't bring eight, nine, no, ten, eleven thousand people in and still expect the same number of GPs or the same services to to spread that thing. Yeah. It simply it can't happen. I mean, that's is not that, anti anything. That's just a pure reality. No, it's not anti anything. That's just fact. Yeah. That, that's just fact. Like, and it's the lack of investment in our health service. Like, I spoke with a doctor this week, and it's just a pure lack of investment across the board in the health service. Mm-hmm. You take it, it'd be that primary care, um, a disability services, A&E, and the hospital. You take it that my child, right, needs a scan that isn't available in Ireland. Mm-hmm. Okay? So she has to go for a scan to London. Now, it's not covered under the health service. Okay? So we'll have to pay €2,000 for this scan. We'll also have to pay our transport and everything else. And that, that, that's, that's our job, or, or her parents will do it. But the scan isn't available in Ireland in 2024, anywhere in the country, not even privately. Then if that scan comes back and says that she needs this operation, mm-hmm. which they have said would be a matter of life-saving surgery, yes, it's also not done here in Ireland. It's done in a spinal centre in Barcelona, and we'll have to raise €135,000 just for the surgery. Emma, can you stay... But yet they're uh, telling me... Yeah, sorry, go ahead. They're telling you... They're telling me that, you know, if she does need the surgery, mm. it's a matter of life-saving surgery. Emma, can you but stay with... But where am I supposed to find 135,000 euros? I don't even know. I, 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 it's a number I can't even get my head around to even... I, I, know it's a, I know it's a rhetorical question, but where could anyone find that? Can you? St- I know your hands are full as everyone's is, Emma. Can you stay with me yeah. for a few minutes? Because I want to introduce, yeah. uh, introduce Pamela into the conversation. Pamela, how are you getting on? Hello, Greg. How are you? Um, you this um, is a story that started for you last week. I'll just let you tell it as it as it uh, as you went through this experience and your family did. Your um, uh, someone close well, to you. Well, we had a pensioner mm. fail at the front door. I rang the GP. GP said phone for an ambulance. He's on blood thinners. He needs to be seen. He needs to be checked. Um, uh, two ambulances came. One was. Um, an occupational therapist to decide could he be treated at home and the other medical ambulance was on its way it was leaving Letter Kenny so they came in he fell I had to get a neighbour to help me lift him Um, one of the ambulances arrived came in, looked at him, talked to him decided he definitely had to go to hospital Mm -hmm. so shortly thereafter the second ambulance arrived. We went to Claire Kenny. I went in my own car, followed the ambulance. We were there between three and four o'clock. And when we arrived, he was just laying on the trolley mm-hmm. for quite some time. He was eventually transferred into a wheelchair trolley type thing. And he sat in that from that time until the next morning. How long ago sat um, in, how long Pamela is that how long was he sat in the wheelchair for from about we'll say four o'clock by the time he got admitted mm-hmm. 
to about 10 o'clock the next morning. Wow. Now you're talking about an 84-year-old man with um, a number of conditions, but he couldn't use his legs. He couldn't walk. Um, a few people initially, within the first hour or two, he had blood taken, he had blood pressure checked. Um, they ran the ECG in the ambulance those kind of things, but from 6 o'clock that evening, there was nothing done. He sat in a corner. So, just to get um, the timelines correct here, from 6 to 6 is 12, and from 6 to 10 is 4, 12 and 4 is 16, so for 16 hours he sat in the wheelchair, and, and you say for that period of time there was very little attention given to him? Very little attention given to him. He's One of his, one of his complaints is he's diabetic. Mm-hmm. He didn't even get to eat in that time, I left him for about 20 minutes at about 2 o'clock in the morning and he went out to dry arch and got sandwiches and coffee. Mm-hmm. Came in, he ate them. If they needed the toilet, it was me took him. Um, and he used me as support to use the toilet. We eventually, somewhere in the early hours of the morning, I had taken him to the bathroom and we had got a room across from resource that had a couch in it. And I asked one of the nurses, and she said, we're not using it at the minute, but if an emergency comes in, you may have to move. Yeah. Which I was totally happy with, because I was getting to sit down for a few minutes. Um, but nobody came near him all night. And eventually, when they did come in the morning, he was moved into a cubicle to be examined. Mm-hmm. And within seconds, another doctor came in, moved him out again. He was running the clinic in this cubicle. We shouldn't have been in there as if we'd walked in ourselves. And I had said to him, we've just been brought in here by a doctor mm-hmm. to wait for a consultant. No, you can't wait in here. So we're put back in the corridor again. We He eventually was moved into the, I'm presuming, the paediatric treatment unit. Um, the consultant came down. He was <sighs> not a very pleasant man. Um, there was a few consultants that came in with different patients at that time, none of them being pleasant to the nurses whatsoever. Being not even, but <laughs> to explain it, the gentleman that was with me, he's 84. It was like sitting in a torture chamber. You were sitting in the lights. He was sore. He was tired. He got to the stage. He was pleading with me to take him home. Mm because he was so sore and so tired and all he wanted to do was lie down. And I kept saying to him, but you've done this much weight now. If you come back tomorrow, it'll all start again. Mm-hmm. Um, he eventually got admitted. It's, it's just total chaos. I'm going to ask you, Pamela, it's it's like a, a, by, by the sounds of it, this, this, is, this is someone that you intervened to help. This doesn't sound like it's a re- relation of yours. He would be related, but... Okay. Um, I'm just saying if you weren't there, he, you know what I mean? If, if you weren't there and you weren't prepared to stay with him as long as you did, um, you know... He would have been his own grade. Yeah, that's, the, that's where I was going. Nothing would have been done with him. Yeah. Absolutely nothing. And he wasn't the only one. There was other people there, um, older people, that didn't come to check to see did they need the toilet, did they need a drink of water, a cup of tea, anything. Hmm. They just weren't checking on them. From a certain time, from shortly after midnight, we had been told before midnight that he was being admitted we were just waiting on a bed and we presumed we were just going to be waiting a short time for a bed. Not a hope. He didn't get... There was no beds available until the next morning. And that was last week, was it? Yeah, And that was last week. Last Tuesday. So what's... Is he still in hospital now or...? He's still in hospital um, and one of the follow-ups from that, like I've been out to him every day since, he needs an MRI scan, but they sent him for an MRI scan in the hospital, and luckily they were checked because he has a pacemaker, the MRI scan can't be done in Letterkenny Hospital. It can only be done in a, one hospital in Ireland, mm. and it's a private hospital, so you have to organise it and pay for it yourself. So what is this gentleman's pathway out of hospital then? doesn't sound like there is one. There's not at the minute. Well, the, I will speak to the private hospital later on today and see can I get him transferred. And if we can't do it by ambulance, because they have to think of cost too. Mm. You know, he's 84, he's on his pension, he hasn't got a lot of money. Um, if 
it's going to work out too expensive by ambulance. I'll go out and take it myself. I've taken a week's holidays now to do what I can. Wow. Well, fair play to you, um, Pamela. But I mean, we're it's a week on, and it sounds like this man's no further on. I mean, he is in a bed, but this the whole crack of you having to take time off work and maybe drive him to a private hospital, the only hospital where this MRI can take place because of his pacemaker. It doesn't sound like an effective health system to me. I'm sorry. It sounds like you're an amazing person, but if you weren't there, I just I, I can't help but think if you weren't there, what would be happening? But that was the thing in any of the uh, last week, Craig. A lot of the older people were left with me. But, but they won't voice if, if they've any concerns. They won't, you know, they're nearly afraid to ask somebody to help them. They'll just sit there and take it and not stand up for themselves. Now, I've been a patient in any myself last summer, and it hasn't got any better. And it now, sounds I'm to me, too, younger. it sounds to me, too, like Pamela he was at the point where he wanted to go home presumably regardless of the consequences even if it was going to have it that even if it meant he was going to die yeah that that he says right stuff i want out of here if i die i die if i come back come back that's terrible yeah that's a horrible that's what it works i'd rather i'd rather lay in my own bed than here yeah i've heard that myself and it's it's, similar words i had said similar words the summer before when I was admitted, mm. and I went home and I went to my own GP in the morning, people are being examined in corridors. You're being asked personal medical questions in corridors. Um, there's, like, the minute you walk into any out there, there's no sense of pride. But it's particularly for the older case, generations. I, I know there's lo- I know there's loads of different people in different yeah. positions, and, and I've, I've spoken to a woman who was asked very intimate questions um, about sexual activity and yeah. what have you within earshot of other people. Um, but, you, you know, yeah. I, it just... Uh, there's something when it's older people that particularly grates with me, that this man's got 84 yeah. and he's... This is his... This is what he's having to deal with now. This is right on our doorstep. This, I could throw a stone down to where this is happening. Do you want to talk about yeah. the, 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 the ward nurses and stuff? Because, as I say, we're here highlighting this issue in support of staff, not against them as such, if you know what I mean. Um, but you've got lovely things to the say about that. The ward nurses are absolutely brilliant. And there's nothing too much for them. If they ask for something, they'll get it. Mm. Um, even if it's only, will you dial the phone from it? The ward nurses, from the minute he went into the ward, have been absolutely brilliant. Giving him total care. Really, really looked after him as if he is family. Yeah. Um, he hasn't, but trying to get, and it's it's, it's not the ward staff at all. I think the ward staff. The aren't system any sounds. Happy with the sim system sounds banjo. The system. Yeah. I'm just wondering again, Pamela, if, if you weren't advocating, if you weren't saying we're going to have to get this man to this hospital by hook or by crook, what would happen? What would what you know? What he, would his he prospects would be, sent be? Home, Greg. And then what does that mean? He would be sent you know what home I mean? Like to. He would be sent home to his own devices. Right. Pamela. And he would land home. Yeah. The, Go on, sorry. He would land home if there was nobody here to take any care of him and just sit in a chair. Pamela, let us know how you get on with you in terms of trying to get to the private hospital and stuff or if we can offer any assistance, please. Thanks so much for joining us. Emma, are you okay to hold just while I have to take a quick break or do you just want to make... Okay, stay where you are because Mark's also going to be joining us. Mark, please be patient with me. Stay there. I do have to take this break. We'll be back with more. Get involved in the show. You know the numbers. Watch the show live now on YouTube, Facebook and at highlandradio.com. Are you struggling with ill-fitting dentures? Are you tired of avoiding the state menu and going straight to the softer options. Blue Poppy's special implant assisted dentures can help restore your full bite sensation. Call today for a free consultation with doctors Ehor and Ahmed, Blue Poppy's new implant team and explore our attractive payment plans. Find contact details for our Letterkenny and Donegal Town practices at bluepoppydental.com. All you need to make your house a home at Patterson's The Hall Lifford. From garden furniture to kitchens, sofas and dining sets, all under one roof. Need a new mattress? 
why not visit our sleep center on the first floor? With a large range of quality beds and mattresses in stock and ready for collection or delivery. Relax in our coffee shop serving hot lunches daily. Open Monday to Saturday, 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Patterson's Kitchens and Interiors, The Hall Lefford. Safe Tech are running appointed persons training in Donegal and Dublin in April. Also running crane lifting supervisor, quad bikes, electro fusion and butt fusion welding programs. All programs are part funded. Terms and conditions apply. And certification accepted on Irish and UK construction sites. If you have a group, Safe Tech trainers will go to you. Contact safetech.ie today for more information. Our McCullough Jewellers in Letterkenny are synonymous with fine jewellery, quality watches and giftware. With stores at Main Street Letterkenny and the Letterkenny Shopping Centre or online at ourmcullough.com. You can choose from their quality product range in a relaxed atmosphere. And their sales staff will be happy to help you make the right choice, whatever the occasion. Our McCullough Jewellers, making moments magical for generations. Um, Matt the Wee Donegal uh, Mammy is uh, calling on all local councillors sitting or prospective TDs, uh, those running in elections in June, either local or European elections, to come to a meeting at 7pm tomorrow evening in the Mount Ergal Hotel, uh, demanding to know their plans on how they intend to support hospital staff uh, and the hospital itself. Um, Emma, have you had any response in terms of those who intend like I, I think really I could almost draw a list of who will be there and who won't if you know what I mean unfortunately I've been yeah. at this game for so long um, as have I so I knew myself even when I sent out the text those who wouldn't even reply to be honest um, and those who would now I've had confirmation from um, Thomas Sean Devine and another member of the 100% redress party Mm -hmm. um, I know a few members of Sinn Féin have got in contact with me and said that they hope to attend. They just had to try and rearrange a few things. Um, but I will be chasing up the rest today to find out mm -hmm. who's coming because I did have somebody say to me this week or, or, or the previous week saying to me, you know, um, well, I'm not running in, 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 in the local or the European. This is somebody who's already elected. But I was like, this isn't an election issue. This is a Donegal issue. It's not about whether you are elected or not or are or, or going to run again or whatever it may be. You're elected now. You're elected now and you still have, be it a few weeks left, a few months left, whatever. The point is you're elected now. Mm -hmm. This is not, you know, this is not an election campaign. This is a, a Donegal campaign. So, you, you know, you need to, you've asked for the people to support you. And the people did. They, they put you in office. So come now now and stand for the people. Yeah. You know, because at the end of the day, like I have a daughter, my other daughter who has, I was telling you about, who has autism. She has the same disease that my eldest daughter has. Mm -hmm. And I was saying yesterday, and, 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 and God love the doctor, he just looked at me like, and I said to him, you, must, you mustn't be that long here in Ireland. Because he said to me, Who, who's managing her disease? And I said to him, her paediatrician here. And he said, no, but you know, this needs a, a, a rheumatologist. And I said, no, I've taken her privately to the rheumatologist. And he was like, Right, and I said, well, because she's been on the waiting list for the children's hospital for five years. Mm -hmm. And he was like, sorry, and I said to him, yeah, she's been waiting to see the, the consultant who's supposed to manage her disease. She's, she's never actually met her. She's been on the list five years. She'll turn 16 in August and she'll have aged out before ever having been seen in our outpatients. And we, weren't, we couldn't leave our child that long, so we took our child privately. I said, but it's 400 euro every time you've seen the consultant. My word. In the private hospital, mm -hmm. I said to him, "You know, it was four. No, well, no, it was four hundred. I beg your pardon for the previous assessment, and I think it's like three hundred and twenty for every appointment after that." But I said to him, "You know, but I said she hasn't been now in the last year because we're also trying to raise money to get her other daughter the scan that she needs because we were told about the scan before Christmas." Mm -hmm. And he said, um, "Okay." And I said, "So I said, you know." If you have complex medical needs, you're on your own, basically. I said, you know, I have to raise about 200000 for Michaela's treatment. And in the meantime, try and keep Rosie's private treatment going because they haven't... Like, she will age Can out. I ask I a question. Well, say, say, for instance, you and your family and friends and supporters aren't doing this. 
uh, say you aren't going private and say that you aren't uh, you, you you weren't fundraising to try and get this scan and and, and an operation that might come from mm-hmm. that what would happen to your two daughters what would be you know what would be their their well, pros- what, their prognosis for Michaela the the idea of the scan is to see if her head is too heavy for her body her bones mm-hmm. are so weak so she would be at risk of neck dislocation which would compress her spinal cord from the neck down and she would be at risk of internal decapitation where the only thing keeping her head attached to her body would be her skin and she would die and that's the reality i'm getting teary saying that but that's the reality um because when you say it out loud it sounds so much different i know and i don't want to upset you what would happen but i think it's very important yeah it's important that we know Um, that that you have to keep going throughout the country yeah there are families throughout the country that have had to fundraise. Elaine Morrissey down the country, she had a surgery last year in Barcelona. She was so bad at that stage. Her life was so much hanging in the balance that the doctor actually said, you're come with whatever money you have now and you can pay me off. Wow. Because she was a mother with two children. Okay. You know what I mean? And then for the likes of, of Rosie, she has this the same disease we just have to keep an eye on to see because they're also at risk of um organ rupture everything is so fragile so they would need their aorta scanned every year uh, but rosie's waiting two years to see the cardiologist do you know what i mean but they're supposed to have their aorta scanned every year because there's their aortas can thin and rupture but if you weren't doing that privately so, that doesn't happen that's the state you, the country but if you're moment. not that, that that's the state the country's in at the moment we see that with children with scoliosis as well Children with complex needs mm. are being uh, basically. It's like my, you know what? My daughter said something to me this week when we were talking about the scan, and 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 she's quite physically disabled at this stage. And uh, the doctor was standing. He's a very very nice doctor, and he was standing mm. talking to about the scan and the things she needed. And he he was, he himself was just like, it's just it's terrible that it's not available here, and I am sorry for that. And he was very apologetic, and he tried to get us numbers of different clinics, mm. but. You know, she turned around and she looked at me, this is a wee girl who'll be turning 19 this year, and she said to me, I think they think I'm a lost cause, Mummy, but I'm still here, and I want to be here. And she looked me dead in the face, and she said, Mummy, will you fight for me? And I said, I absolutely will fight for you, yeah. And she said, me, because I'm tired. I said, I know you are. And she said, but but I want to be here, so fight for me. And I said, well, absolutely fight for you, I promise you. And she was like, right, okay. I said, the scan will be done this year, I promise you. I said, when, because I'm a full-time carer, I said, when the respite grant comes in, I will get that scan cleared and we will get it. I said, we just have to get you to June. Mm-hmm. And she was like, okay. But then after June, when you have that scan, where do we get €135,000? And your doctor's standing there telling you that your child's neck could dislocate and compress her spinal cord. That she could end up with internal decapitation but you'll need 135,000 euros. Okay. Emma, Where in God's good grief know. am I supposed to get that? I don't know, Emma, and I, I don't know. I don't know how you <clears throat> keep not keep going. That sounds like something that I'm not saying, but just the strength to keep doing what you're doing, and then. You know, and I know, I know an awful lot of carers in your position and others have this awful anxiety of what happens if you get sick or what happens if something happens to you, what happens to your daughters then? And it's so, so, it's so tough because... Oh, without... that's what keeps me awake. Well, it's yeah. one of the many things that keeps me awake at night. It's yeah. like, if I got hit, I always joke and say, if I got hit by a bus tomorrow, like I got my husband, like, but if I, I got know, hit by a bus yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. But, you know... What happens? And then as me and him have, have lay awake at night and we've said, like I remember lying awake when, when we took her abroad for treatment because it wasn't the treatment she needed wasn't available here and we were going to try anything. At the start when we told there was no cure, you know, you're a parent, you have to leave every stone unturned. Mm-hmm. And we took her abroad and we took her to a private hospital in South Africa. And I remember lying awake and him and I saying to each other, what happens after all? happens to us, yeah. You know, you know, because we can't live forever. And we don't want her to, you know, go into... I mean, there's, there are some people in their 30s who are in retirement homes because they need the full-time care and there isn't the care in the community. This is a wee girl who has been approved for two carers twice a day, but there's no carers available. Mm-hmm. So she doesn't have them. So although she's approved for them, she doesn't have them. So me and my husband were saying, you know, what happens after us? What happens after our day if she's approved for carers and she doesn't get them? What happens? What happens to this child? 
We should be an adult then, but should be our sister or child. There was what a, happens to her? There was a, what happens to her sister with autism? There was a doctor, uh, a, a, a note sent out just at the start of COVID whereby it effectively said that we're going to be so overwhelmed that you might have to choose who you treat and who you don't treat. And sometimes you just wonder if that's kind of all in situ all the time to some extent. Like, you know, if you are of a certain age or of a certain condition, I hope the health service doesn't give up on people, but sometimes you would wonder. Emma, is this meeting open to the public tomorrow night as well? Originally, I had just invited on, but I have said to anybody, like, as a family here, I never turn anybody away. It is absolutely open if you want to come, because I don't know. Maybe no elected representative. I know that there is a couple going to be showing up, but I don't know if if many, uh, you know, if all of them will show up, because I can tell you, as you say. But it also I've tells the tale. Long enough. It tells the tale. Not turning up tells the tale as well. That's what uh, the, the, the point I try and make on this programme. Sometimes when you Well, don't... this is what I would say. To family cares, and I'm not trying to cut across you, Grace, I beg your pardon, but this is what I would say to anybody that shows up tomorrow night, any elected representative, or any uh, elected representative who doesn't show up, if you see any member of the public that does show up, have a good long look at who's there. Have a good long look at who has shown up for the most vulnerable in society. Take a good long look at it, because if they can't show up for the most vulnerable in society, then they're not showing up for you, I can tell you that now. Emma, thanks for your time. Best wishes to you and, and, and no your problem, lovely family. Michael. Okay, and stay in touch with us. Thank thanks you. Thanks so much, Mark. Are you there still? I beg your pardon for keeping you waiting so long. Are you there, Mark? No, Mark. I'm still here. How you, you doing? Are. Listen, no, no, but Mark, I have about three or four minutes. Would, would you be available in, in the next hour, or do you want to try and get your story in in a couple of minutes? I'm so oh, sorry. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll squeeze it in the next few okay. minutes. If all right, go ahead, Mark. Take care. Um, thanks so I, I, much for first of all. First of all, I just want to say what a credit that woman is. That woman's an unbelievable aspiration to any mother out there. And I'm sitting here almost in tears, what she's going through. And I think that should be a wake-up call to all our listeners out there when they're making their votes, that they could seriously, seriously consider, look what's happening to our wee country. Look what's happening with our hospitals. They're bursting at the seams. There's nobody caring. It's, it's, we're living in a very, very sad world, but yet not our doors are wide open. Come on in, come on in, come on in. Anyway, I was at my GP, and to give my credit to my GP was fantastic. He put me on a drip because I was so dehydrated, and he called for an ambulance for me to take into Larrakinney Hospital. And unfortunately, the, the ambulance was phenomenal. They were there right away. The staff were brilliant. And then they took me up to the hospital, and that's where my ordeal started, and I couldn't believe it. But after sitting on this corridor, uh, and I mean in, in this wee corridor, and, and seeing other people coming in whilst the corridor's full, they're, they're taking in their bloods, their sats is taken, and then they're told to sit in this corridor where there's no room. They're taken out of the casualty waiting room, because when you come in by an ambulance, you come in with a different entrance. And this corridor keeps getting fuller and fuller and fuller. At one point, I, I, I was so thirsty, yet not I'm on a drip. I asked, could I get a drink of water? The nurse goes, oh, I'm a nurse. I, I, I want to go see one of the staff with the green jumper or the green shirt. And I could see a room away up in the distance, and there were about four or five green staff in it. And the crack looked 90 in there. I really wish I was, felt I was in the forum to be in there because the laughter and the crack was good in there, but none of them came out to walk through the staff or, or through the patients that were sitting in that corridor. None of them. And I was there for four, uh, uh, 14 hours in total. But eventually I said to the nurse, I really need a drink of water. Could you please go up and ask one of them to come out of there and ask, is the people okay? So she did, and I asked her to get a drink of water. And you would think I asked him for a million pounds. The guy's attitude was diabolical. First of all, I have to say his attitude was diabolical. Then eventually I needed the toilet and um, they took the drip off me and they told me I could use the toilet. When I come back, my seat was gone with my drip, with the, the fluids that I was on, also was all gone. And there was an old man, a creator on oxygen on, on the seat where I was sitting. And I said to the nurse, excuse me, I just went to the toilet and I came back. Her attitude, you shouldn't be dealing with cattle, never mind with people. Well, she said, excuse me, she said, you went to the toilet. We had to prioritise. This guy needed oxygen. I said, that's not my argument. My argument is, where's my seat and where's my fluids? I was on a drip. Mm -hmm. And she goes, oh, we'll find something now. Find a seat up that corridor. She pointed me up to another part of the corridor where I sat for another seven hours before I was seen with no drip and no nothing.
But when you got seen, you say you were treated well, but it's the whole experience oh, until to, such to, time. To give, to, give, to, give, to give the doctors credit whenever they did see it, it's them I feel for. It's the doctor's staff that I feel sorry okay. for. And uh, whilst I was there, Greg, I must admit, there was a gentleman taken in by ambulance with pains in his chest. And he was there for about 12 hours. Mm. And that creditor, and I still worry about that man to this day. I wish I got his name. That man signed himself out. And that man was in his over 70 odds. Well, 1,200 people did he, between January and May last year. Mark, I'm going well, to have to... I, yeah. I want to... Yeah, I want to cry for that gentleman because mm. that man left our hospital and God knows his condition. OK. Listen, Mark, I wish I had... people out there, Greg... Uh, yeah, go ahead. Consider your vote. All I'm going to say, Greg, is consider your vote. And our politicians don't care for the people of Donegal or care for the people of Ireland. Our politicians don't. All right, Mark. Thanks for your thanks for your time. I do appreciate it. And as I said earlier, unfortunately, I, I uh, just am out of time. I'm going to take a break. Back with the weather. Have you entered our ten thousand euro home makeover draw? If the answer is yes, you are now automatically entered into our extra cash giveaway. If the answer is no, then now is the time to enter. Greg Hughes will be ringing one lucky person on Friday the fifth of April, giving you the chance to win two thousand five hundred euro in cash. That's not all. You will still have a chance of winning in our main draw of a ten thousand euro home makeover in association with. Foyan Company plus five thousand euro in cash. Get your ticket now at HighlandRadio.com. Lorraine, what's the story with all the Pat the Baker sourdough packs framed on your wall? What? They're my diplomas. Diplomas? I've taken a lot of tests, you know, for deliciousness, for freshness, for flavour, for taste. Sorry, tests. You need to butter up your act and take the crusty craving taste test with the new Pat the Baker sourdough bread. Go on, be a taste champion. Pat the Baker, so fresh it's famous. Pat the Baker, fresh it's famous. I'm making a move. Looking for real choice? Leave diesel behind and make the move to Toyota Hybrid Electric at Kelly's Toyota Letterkenny and Mount Charles. World-leading hybrid electric technology, lower emissions driving, with the widest choice of hybrid electric models from Ireland's best-selling car brand. With flexible payment options available, make the move today at Kelly's Toyota Letterkenny and Mount Charles. Toyota, built for a better world. When you live in a country that can deliver four seasons in one day, the paintwork on the outside of your home has to work especially hard. Luckily, Fleetwood's weather-clad masonry paint is formulated to meet the weathering challenges of our unique climate. Crafted using the highest quality ingredients by master mixers in our cavern factory, Fleetwood paint delivers rich colours that resist the harshest Irish weather. It's no wonder Fleetwood Paints has been a trusted Irish brand for nearly 75 years. Highland Radio Weather Updates brought to you by McElhenney's. With over 50 years of serving the community in Donegal, McElhenney's is proud to be part of every moment, big and small. Support local, shop McElhenney's Bally Buffet. OK, plenty of dry weather today with a mix of cloud, bright spells and a few showers. Temperatures 10 to 12 degrees. Coming up after the news and obituary notices, community guard information with appeals on burglaries in Ballyshannon, criminal damage in Carn Dunna, Manor Cunningham, uh, Killy Gordon, theft from a car in Letterkenny, uh, two incidences of that, uh, a hit and run, uh, and so much more besides. So stay tuned. That's community guard information coming up for you after we take a break and the news and obituary notices. When it's time for confirmation or first communion, it's time for a trip to Watson Menswear, Letter Kenny. Choose from a great selection of top label, casual and formal wear. Suits with matching shirts and ties, blazers and jackets. Also denims, chinos and footwear from big names like Diesel, 1880 Club and Tommy Bow. Stand out on the big day at Watson Menswear. Open seven days a week on Main Street, Letter Kenny and watsonmenswear.com. Measles is highly infectious and can be serious. About one out of five people who get measles will be hospitalized. The best protection against the measles is vaccination. If you or your child miss the MMR vaccine, the HSE is now offering a free catch-up program for children and eligible adults. And once fully vaccinated, you're protected for life. To find out how to get your vaccine and to book an appointment, visit hse.ie forward slash measles from the HSE. 
House to home, Bridge End, Donegal. Our modest front door opens onto two floors of Irish made furniture, suites, beds, mattresses, dining, and occasional furniture. Step into our showroom and see how we can transform your house into a home. House to home furniture, flooring, slide robes, and interiors, Bridge End, Donegal. The life of a Charlie's chip is never dull. Once they're selected, they're off to Charlie's, where they lose that jacket, have a nice wash, and get into shape. Before going out, there's always a few nerves, totally unnecessary, because, let's face it, they always go down well. Enjoy Charlie's chips to sit in or take away daily from 12 to 8 at Pierce Road, Letterkenny. When the hunger hits, pull into Charlie's. online and on the Highland Radio app. This is Highland Radio News. Good morning, I'm Michaela Clark with the news at 10 o'clock. A public meeting to discuss the consistent pressure on Donegal's healthcare service is taking place tomorrow. It's in response to concerns from staff at Letterkenny University Hospital, paramedics and patients. Elected public representatives and local election and European election candidates are being urged to attend the meeting tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock at the Mount Errigal Hotel in Letterkenny to outline how they plan to address the widespread issues. The meeting's organiser Emma told the Nine Till Noon show that it's clear there is a complete lack of resources to provide adequate care for people in Donegal. One of the paramedics this week was talking to me. He said that for any shown on a bank holiday weekend this weekend, they were assigned one ambulance. My own daughter had to go in an ambulance because her complex mental needs the previous week. And it took two ambulance crews. One of the ambulances had to leave because there was a cardiac arrest. Absolutely, I could completely understand that. They had to prioritise. But if there was only one ambulance on on a bank holiday weekend to cover any show, what happens if two people have a cardiac arrest? The number of people driving under the influence of drink or drugs has been branded as very disappointing. 140 people were arrested for drink or drug driving between Good Friday and yesterday. More officers from the Rhodes Policing Unit were on patrol as part of the Garda operation, which began last Thursday morning. Three people were killed on the country's roads over the weekend. Sinn Féin's transport spokesperson, South Donegal Deputy Martin Kenny, says drink or drug driving is totally unacceptable. Very disappointing that so many people are clearly using drugs and using alcohol and then get behind the wheel of a car and driving and that's reflected in the number of people that were caught over the weekend. So many people are taking chances or taking risks or driving erratically and irresponsibly and as we can see from that particular statistic, so many people are driving while drunk or under the influence of, of drugs. The Teachers Union of Ireland is calling for greater investment in education. The latest OECD figures show of 36 countries, Ireland spends the lowest percentage of its GDP on education. At second level, this accounts for just 1% of our national wealth, which is just half the OECD average. TUI President David Waters says its annual Congress will today hear calls to provide teachers with adequate supports. Finland and death. 7% of GDP annually into uh, education. We don't even do half that. I mean, I mean, it's, it's staggering. It's quite it's shameful, really. If we want to improve our education system, and there's lots of lofty ambitions of, of people have these great ideas, but really, you need to reduce class sizes. You need to give teachers the adequate resources to be able to attend to each student's needs. Disorder in Derry yesterday has been condemned. An unnotified period took place. Petrol bombs were thrown by young people and a van was set on fire in the Craigan area. Tara Duggan has more. Several warnings were issued by police from a drone as an unnotified parade got underway on Central Drive in the Craigan area of Derry yesterday afternoon. The warnings were ignored and police observed petrol bombs being prepared by young people prior to the parade. Meanwhile, a local person's van was set on fire next to a local community hall on Central Drive and a number of petrol bombs were thrown in the area. The devices were also thrown at members of the media. Derry City and Straban Area Commander Chief Superintendent Gillian Carney says an investigation has been commenced and footage obtained will be reviewed. Meanwhile, SDLP leader and FOIL MP Colm Eastwood says yesterday's disorder is the last thing that the community wants or needs. Guardi and Donegal have launched Operation Enable. The multi-agency initiative involving Guardi, Donegal County Council, the Disabled Drivers Association of Ireland and the Irish Wheelchair Association aims to target the unauthorised use of disabled parking bays and disabled parking permits. The operation, which is underway in the Ballyshannon district, will conclude on Monday, April the 8th. 
There will also be a focus on other forms of illegal parking within the area that interferes with or restricts the free movement of people with disabilities or limited mobility. Weather now, plenty of dry weather today with a mix of cloud, bright spells and a few showers. Highest temperatures of 10 to 12 degrees. That's all from Highland Radio News for now. We'll be back with an update again at 11 o'clock. Until then, you can keep up to date with the latest local news on our website, highlandradio.com. Good morning. The obituary notices for this Tuesday morning, April the 2nd. The death has taken place of Bridie Gamble, née Porter, 18 Glebe Park, Sire Mills, reposing at her home today from 12 noon. Fiona leaving her home on Thursday morning at 20 past 10 for Requiem Mass in St. Teresa's Church, Sire Mills at 11 o'clock, interment afterwards in the adjoining cemetery. Family time plays from 11 o'clock to 11 o'clock. The Requiem Mass can be viewed live via the parish webcam. The deaths have taken place of Una Mary Bowden, Nay Carlin, and her daughters Kira Mary Bowden and Sirsha Bowden, my Colin Galway. Una, Kira, and Sirsha are reposing at the home of Una's father, John Carlin, Milltown Rafo. Funeral from there to more morning at 11 o'clock for Requiem Mass at 12 noon in St. Junin's Church Rafo, with interment afterwards in the family plot in the old graveyard convoy. Family time, please, on the morning of the funeral. Family Family Flowers only place donations in lieu to the Madras Centre in Galway, Kev Terence McClintock, funeral director. The funeral mass can be viewed live on MCN Media or the Parish of Rafo webcam. The death has taken place of Michael Harkin, 18 Moss Park, Gaia. His remains are reposing in the family home. Funeral from there to more morning at half past eight for nine o'clock Requiem Mass in St Joseph's Church, Gallia, followed by interment in the city cemetery. Family time please from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock. The death has taken place of William Billy Doherty, formerly of Corina, Glettercanny, Luton and Coolock in Dublin. William's funeral mass will take place at St Paul's Church, Airfield, Coolock, Dublin 13 at 10 o'clock on Thursday morning with burial in Balgriffin Cemetery. The death has taken place of James Jim Carson, 7 Binion Avenue, Letterkenny. Jim's remains are reposing at his late residence with house private place from after the rosary at 9 o'clock until 12 noon. Funeral from there to more morning at half past 10, going to St Junin's Cathedral, Letterkenny for 11 o'clock Requiem Mass, which can be viewed on churchservices.tv, followed by interment in Commonwealth Cemetery. Family time, please, on the morning of the funeral. Family flowers only place donations in lieu of flowers if desired to the Haematology Unit, Letterkenny University Hospital and the Donegal Hospice care of any family member. The death has occurred of Breed O'Donnell, Nay Hannigan, Gortley, Letterkenny, reposing at her late residence. Funeral Mass in St Junin's Cathedral this morning at 11 o'clock, which can be viewed live at churchservices.tv, followed by burial in the family plot in New Lex Cemetery. House private please before the funeral tomorrow. Family flowers only please donations if wished to the Irish Cancer Society, care of Pascal Blake, funeral director. The death has taken place of Anne Murphy, named McIntyre, 12 Brookfield Straban and formerly of Olympic Drive Straban, reposing at her home. Fiona leaving her home this morning at 20 past 11 for Requiem Mass in St Mary's Church, Melmount at 12 noon. Interment afterwards in the adjoining cemetery. The Requiem Mass can be viewed live via the parish webcam. The death has taken place of Celine Doherty, Key Street, Moville. Celine's remains are reposing at the home of her niece, Agnes Kelly, Nay Gillen, Derry Road, Moville. Funeral from there this morning at 20 past 11 for 12 o'clock funeral mass at St Pius X Church, followed by burial in Drunk Cemetery. Family flowers only, donations in lieu to Carndonick Community Hospital, care of any family member or Eamon McLaughlin, funeral director. And the death has occurred of Tony McBride, Rock Hill, Port Nablat, Dunfanhy, County Donegal. 
Tony's remains are reposing at his late residence. Funeral Mass in Holy Cross Church Dunfanhy this morning at 11 o'clock with burial afterwards in the adjoining graveyard. Funeral Mass can be viewed live on mcn.live. Family time plays before the funeral this morning. Family flowers only plays, donations in lieu if desired to the Donegal Hospice, care of any family member or James Harkin Funeral Director. For family information and more details regarding wakes and funerals, please go to highlandradio.com. Measles is highly infectious and can be serious. About one out of five people who get measles will be hospitalised. The best protection against the measles is vaccination. If you or your child miss the MMR vaccine, the HSE is now offering a free catch-up programme for children and eligible adults. And once fully vaccinated, you're protected for life. To find out how to get your vaccine and to book an appointment, visit hse.ie forward slash measles from the HSE. All right, you're welcome back. You're welcome back to the Nine Till Noon Show. Good morning if you've just joined us. Community Guard information is on the way. Uh, that poor mother, a Donegal TD, must stand up and quote a list of the risks of what will happen to these poor kids and ask the other TDs to close their eyes and visualise these awful, avoidable atrocities happening to their own kids. Now, open their eyes and ask them what they would do about it. This is an awful atrocity, sitting idly by and allowing the pain, suffering and uncertainty of life to happen to these kids and their carers. Um, let me see nurses uh, need to be allowed to do more nurses should be able to do some of the things that doctors can do nurses need different grades and they can wear different uniforms nurses need to balance the workload ambulance men uh, and women shouldn't have to wait by trolleys nurses should be allowed to take over uh, let me see. I work in the hospital. We're being dragged through the mill. We're exhausted. We can't do any more. I dread going to work. I feel so disrespected. The young staff are leaving. So a lot of us are over 50 and I'm going to leave, uh, they say. And lots of you commenting on uh, social media as well. I will try and get to those. Uh, someone pointing out, actually, there's one I did want to reference here because maybe my comments were misunderstood. Um... Elaine uh, said, Greg, the problem has been here for more than 15 years at least, so you can't blame an increase of 8,000. This has just made it worse, not the cause. No, of course it's not. And any regular listener to the show would know that we were have been covering this and Sean was covering this for years. Of course, things were bad. And, you know, things aren't worse now because of the increased population. The point was uh, I was making was is that you simply can't increase a population to that extent without providing uh, extra services. That being said what we are seeing uh, unprecedented uh, in the last while is the GPs and uh, the consultants coming out and speaking publicly about the situation there. I know there have been problems with our health service, says a listener, for years, but the last couple of years are a nightmare. This is all stemming from overcrowding. We have taken in too many people in Donegal. The GPs can't cope with the extra patients, so they send them to the ED. It's disgraceful, but more important, it can be it can be a matter of life and death for some people. Irish people deserve better, especially our elderly. They should be treated with respect and dignity. So sad listening to this lady, says another caller, talking about the elderly gentleman wanting to go home because of long delays in pain and discomfort, feeling he didn't care if he died. Now imagine uh, if he was there alone and euthanasia was available. Yeah, it, it wouldn't work like that, but I do understand that... Uh, and I've expressed the concerns and I would like to be reassured myself is that the way this country is set up, often uh, older people are portrayed as a burden. I do not see it as that. And you just would hope that they wouldn't want to f feel pressured to deburden society. And um, do we really ever want to be in that situation? Uh, our GP sent my father to the ED last Monday. We arrived at 5.30pm and sat until Tuesday afternoon at 1.30. The next day, until finally we left as my father was exhausted, sore from sitting and hungry. He only got seen by the triage nurse and given two paracetamol. Then after we left, the ED rang me a few hours later looking for him and I explained I took him home because he was exhausted and she said, OK, no problem, I'll just mark on his notes, too tired to wait. 
It was absolutely carnage up there. I had never seen anything like it. There were people sitting on the floor inside the ED with a blanket round them hooked up to drips, patients in wheelchairs lined in the corridors who had been there for more than 24 hours. I really wanted to video this to show people that absolute madness, but obviously I couldn't as it isn't allowed. Just complete madness, they say. Keep uh, in touch with us on uh, those issues, 0866 to 25,000 uh, WhatsApps and texts. We'll be back with Community Garda information with Garda Sergeant Eunan Walsh after we take the break. The county's number one talk show, the 9 till noon show on Highland Radio. It's time for Vision Ireland Bingo on Highland Radio. It's Tuesday, April 2nd. Playing on a brown sheet, reference number is S7, it's game 14. Today's numbers are 50 41 22 62 24 90 28 10 9 and 69 Phone your claim to 91048833 before 8 tonight, leaving your name, contact number and the name of the shop where you purchased your book. Get all your Vision Ireland bingo information at highlandradio.com. Do you need a little extra help staying in your home? At Bluebird Care, we offer a wide variety of QMARC approved personalised home care services across Donegal. And our fully trained and committed staff will always meet your care needs with kindness, compassion and dignity. To get your personal home care assessment plan, visit bluebirdcare.ie or call our care team today on 07491 29562 and bring care home. Cruise in style with a brand new Nissan at iMotors. Whether it's a brand new Nissan Qashqai with 3.9% finance, the Nissan X-Trail, the proud winner of the large SUV of the year, or Ireland's best value EV, the Nissan Leaf with 0% finance. Visit us today at iMotors.ie to avail of these limited offers. Gareth here from TFS and Letterkenny. We are now taking bookings for the busy spring summer period. If you are a business or homeowner anywhere in the northwest, let us take care of your painting, power washing and landscaping. Also, facility management, cleaning and utility needs. Call us today on 9177 or email accounts at tfsireland.ie. Looking for that Brooks experience? Try the new range at bmcsports.ie, new Ghost Max, Glycerin 21, or the Adrenaline GTS 23. Step into our safe size experience so we can fit the best trainer for your foot. Let us make your trainer experience the best it can be. Brian McCormick Sports, Main Street, Letterkenny. The Community Garda information slot is brought to you by Sheridan Security Systems. Protecting what you value most. Call today and get your zero wire alarm system from €299. Euro. Sheridan Security, 9126025. Oh, okay, 19 minutes past 10 this Tuesday, the 2nd of April 2024. Time for this week's Community Garda information. And in studio with me today is Garda Sergeant Eunan Walsh. Eunan, thank you very much as always. Really Morning, appreciate Jay. you nice calling things. up. Everything is good. Right, OK, uh, we'll get straight into it. We'll start with uh, reported burglaries in the south of the county. Yes, Greg, these are two burglaries which occurred in the area of Tubber Cavan Garden in the Ballyshannon area. So uh, both burglaries occurred at vacant properties and they have only been reported uh, after being discovered in, within the last week. One of the houses, a holiday home, was uh, entered at some stage between the beginning of January and the end of March this year and damage was caused to the front door to gain entry. Fortunately, nothing was stolen from the property. Uh, the other house we're, we're referring to was broken into between the 1st of March and the end of March. Again, the front door to this property was forced open. Entry was gained. The inside of the house was ransacked. And again, fortunately, nothing was stolen. It's most likely that the two burglaries occurred during the shorter time frame of the 1st to the 30th of March. And again, may be connected. And we're appealing to anybody who may have observed any suspicious activity in the area during the month of March in the Cavan Garden area of Ballyshannon to contact the Guardian in Ballyshannon uh, 07198 and again if anybody can assist with any information we can ask them to get in touch please and again people are can also use the confidential line to report something in confidence one 800 Okay, 
so uh, it is over the course of uh, last month, so people uh, may have to rack their brains on that. But uh, as uh, Eunice says, if you've seen anything suspicious, get in contact with your local guardie. Uh, criminal damage now in Carntona, yes, uh, Eunice. This is a criminal da- damage incident, Greg, which occurred on Saturday night, Sunday morning past, so Sunday the 31st, uh, between the hours of 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. Uh, one of the windows of a business premises at the location was smashed between the times. And again, busy time of the morning, Saturday night in the Canton area. May have been people in the area, may have saw something or heard something. So we appeal to anybody who may have been in the area and who has dash cam to make the footage available to Gardaí. And again, if you can assist with the information, please contact Bunkrana Garda Station 074-93-20540, please. Uh, staying with criminal damage, uh, this time in Manor Cunningham. Yes, this happened Sunday night past, just uh, the 31st of March into Monday morning, they were the first, so sometime between 10pm Sunday night and 8am on Monday morning in the area of Abbey Park in Manor Cunningham. So damage was caused to the wing mirror of a car parked at the location. And again, anybody who observed any suspicious activity or may have information to help us in inquiries to contact every kindergarten station 07491 67100. Yeah, more damage to a vehicle this time in Killy Gordon. Yes, this is uh, damage to a... Jeep in the area of Mullingar, Killy Garden, again Sunday night uh, after 8 pm and 2 pm yesterday. So, to some time from Sunday night to the afternoon of yesterday, Monday, a Jeep was parked at the house and a rock was thrown through the front passenger window between the times. Uh, fortunately, no entry was gained to the Jeep, the Jeep, but you can imagine substantial damage was caused. And again, if anybody can assist the investigation, to contact the Little Kenny Garda Station 074 916700. Or again, the confidential lane, one 800 6 treble one Now, a car broken into and uh, uh, items uh, stolen, this time in Letterkenny. Yes, this was last Monday week, last Monday morning, Monday week, Monday morning, 25th of March, between midnight and 6am, so sometime on the Sunday night, the 24th. Uh, a car was parked in the area of Oliver Plunkett Road, Letterkenny, uh, and a sum of, uh, the car was entered and a sum of cash was stolen from it. Uh, no damage was caused to the car, so... If any observed, anybody observed any suspicious activity in the area or anybody who is dash cam who can assist with an investigation, contact the Garda Dealer Kenny again, 07491 67 100. OK, and a car stolen this time. Um, yes, is uh, that correct? This is a car which was stolen from the Meadowbank, Meadowbank Park area along the end of Kenny uh, sometime after 8.30pm on Saturday past and... 3.30am on Sunday morning, the 31st of March. So a white, a silver Toyota Vitz, a very distinctive uh, number plate, Greg, partial reg 1620Y10. So an awfully registered uh, silver Toyota Vitz was stolen from the area. And again, if anybody thinks they may observe this car being driven between those times or to any information in relation to the current location of the car, to contact the guard, the Kenny. 07491 Again, very distinctive number plate, so we may be confident people may have seen the car in the area around those times. OK, right. Now, um, I, I've said this on the show before, and I'm not saying this is the reason what we're talking about, but a lot of people now have very big cars and uh, some very tight parking spaces out there. Uh, but anyway, uh, speak to us a little bit more about uh, reports of uh, hit-and-run instances in, yes, in shopping and retail say, car parks. Unfortunately, something, this is something that's happening on a daily basis. Wow. Okay. Uh, it's particularly in Letterkenny, in the retail parks area of the times of the town. Uh, we noticed a significant increase in the amount of reports being made in relation to what we would call hit-and-run road traffic collisions. So basically that's somebody who reverses out of a parking spot or drives into his parking spot and collides with another vehicle causing Have damage. Have you chose the language quite carefully there in that it's not just, oh, I've scraped off a car and off I go, that this is seen as, albeit on the lower end of, of the damage scale, this is being seen as, a, you know, a hit and run road traffic well, incident. Well, under the definition of 106 of the Road Traffic Act, without going into the finer details, that's what they're defined of. Okay. It's just an important clarification, I think. It is, yes. Yeah. And I do accept in some circumstances you may you may glide with a car, tip of the car with your bumper, 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 and not be aware of it and and leave. But in many of the instances that we're dealing with, Greg, it's it's it is known that the person does drive mm. off. So what's the driver's obligation then? Well, you're obliged on the road traffic act to give what we call appropriate information to the other driver, which is your name and address, your insurance details, and the registration number of your car. So if the other person isn't there, which is which would be the norm, they're maybe in shopping or at a cinema or wherever they are, and they're not at the car, you're obliged to report it 
to in Garda Síochána. So that means contacting the Kenny Garda station, giving the same information, your phone number, your name and address, registration of your car, your insurance details, and the number of the other car involved. Mm-hmm. You know, if it, it does happen, and it, it, sometimes people say it happens by mistake, but that's the case. It happens by mistake. But driving off without reporting it doesn't happen by mistake. And the penalties are up to a €1,000 and or three months imprisonment. So yep. it's significant penalties. Okay. And it's a, a significant amount of work, Greg, for my guys investigating these, going to car parks, following up, chasing after registered owners, getting CCTVs, com- you know, doing investigations and maybe prosecuting. But that is how they're treated. Yes. Uh, OK, right. So uh, if you see it happening, you're asked to report it, but also if you're responsible. Uh, it is uh, a, a crime, as you heard there, under the road traffic legislation and one which will be fully investigated. And you say, you know, it's a daily occurrence. It Father is, Shad, every day, right? unfortunately, okay. Greg, yes. Well, astonishing. All right, interesting. Uh, talk to me about Operation uh, Enable, your colleagues in Bally Shannon. Yes, it's been concentrated in, in the Bally Shannon district this year, uh, Commence at 8 a.m. yesterday morning and will conclude at 8 a.m. next Monday morning, the 8th of April. Uh, it's a multi agency initiative between the Gardaí, Donegal County Council, and the Disabled Drivers Association of Ireland. And again, the objective, objective of the operation is to target the unauthorised use of disabled parking bays and disabled parking permits within the Valley Shannon district. And again, an additional focus this year will be to target other forms of illegal parking, which we see regularly. Uh, parking on drop footpaths and any other type of parking uh, that interferes or restricts the free movement of people uh, with disabilities or limited mobility. And again, just to make people aware, the, the fine for uh, unauthorised parking in a disabled bay without a permit is €150. Euro. Mm, not insignificant. Recently doubled, actually. So Yes. And there is enforcement. OK, so uh, keep an eye on that. You shouldn't have to sort of... Be careful under the threat yes, one, of being it's stopped. It's, it's, it's just it's one of my pet hates. So yeah. it's, it's something that I encourage my guys to be to be on the lookout all the time. You know. There you go. You heard it there from the horse's mouth, right? Um, uh, there's been a a, a a massive flood in the media. I think of of. Um, messaging from the Guardian in terms of, you know, uh, being safe on the roads in the run-up to this bank holiday, during the bank holiday and, and post-bank holiday as well. Um, what happened, what's happened? what been happening uh, in relation to enforcement in our region over the last number of days? So we've been out, out and about since 7am Thursday. Uh, it concluded this morning, Tuesday at 7am. Not to say that we're not on the roads now, but this was a focused uh, bank holiday weekend. We're out across the county... Checkpoints, patrols, speed checks, a number of fixed charge penalty notices have been issued for various offences and a number of cars seized for road traffic matters. And unfortunately, there have been six people arrested for drink driving and seven for drug driving. That's 13 people for into driving under intoxicated over the weekend. And, and I'll say to you, these are the ones that we're catching. A mm-hmm. uh, number of detections in relation to speeding, no tax, no t- of all tyres, NCT, and a disqualified driver was also arrested. Uh, and altered forged documents were seized by Gardaí. And just in relation to that, um, Gardaí now have at their disposal technology, uh, they've the insurance database, for an example, many of the vehicles, uh, I'm not sure if there's handheld devices, but in any case, uh, very quickly now, a number plate can be scanned and it can be determined quite quickly whether there is insurance on that, whether it's showing. Yes, we've all been sure what, 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 yeah. what people would call mobile phones. We refer to them as mobility devices where at the side of the road you can type in the number of the car and rather than having the radio back to the station or go back to the station, it'll ping on your phone if the driver is disqualified. So it can be dealt with it immediately at the side of the road. We're seeing, uh, before we get on to the rest of the info, we're seeing more consistently now uh, more people detected for drunk driving and drink driving and it's beyond my remit or yours perhaps Union, um to advise people because drug taking is illegal in this country but I think particularly with young people they might not understand that you know there's a, a longer half life I don't know precisely what how long it is nor, nor I don't think you do either but that they might go out on a Saturday or something or a Friday they shouldn't be taking drugs because it's illegal and then could be driving the Sunday the Monday or the Tuesday there would be no sort of they wouldn't present as haven't had taken drugs, but it was still would come up in the system. Uh, and as I say, we can't timeline that as such. But I just I, I hope people understand that it's slightly different to alcohol. Do you know what I mean? I do. I do know where you're coming from, and, and I do see it myself. But but what I will say to people is, for the vast majority of of drugs, it's irrelevant that you're impaired. Mm. There is a, a limit, and if you're over the limit, 
whether you feel you're fit to drive or whether you look like you're fit to drive or capable of driving, that's irrelevant. If you're over the limit, you're over the limit and the same penalties apply. Yeah. I, I get the point in relation to we can advise people about when to drink and what to drink. I'm not going to be here and advise people take your drugs. No, it's illegal because yeah. they're they're legal. Because That's the point. It, the, yes. We and, and and it's difficult from your perspective and maybe someone outside the force might be able to step in on this one. You can't take drugs. So if there's drugs in your system, there's no lower limit. You're 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 done. Yes. Um but I just hope young people have are being educated to understand that A firstly they shouldn't be taking drugs, but B how it behaves in their system and how it's detected subsequently. And aside from that the stereotypical drink driver was the fellow that you open the door and you fell out of the car and you yeah. get drunk, smell of the drink, eyes bloodshot. The limits are so now low now, Greg, to in relation to drink, drink driving. Yeah, yeah. You may think that you're not impaired, you're capable of driving, but the, 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 my answer to that is zero. Well, with drink driving, it's zero, zero. I think. The yes, days I, think I haven't even a pint, I think. No, I think so. I think they're, they're gone. Yes, and, yes. I think, and I think that's what an awful lot of people uh, believe. It's just with the drugs. Uh, and, and, I just don't think I people think have a lot of people because, much. you know, if you're going out for a few pints, What's the point in having one paint and driving? Of course, yeah, 100%. So, it's like nothing is my advice. Yeah, of course. Uh, so you were going to go on then, I think, to tell us a little bit more about this, this the, the aim of this campaign over the weekend. Um, Again, you know. to protect vulnerable road users and reduce the fatal and serious road collisions throughout high visibility road policing and strict enforcement. Thankfully, Greg, we did not have any fatal road collisions in the Nigal Division, but uh, cannot say that unfortunately for the rest of the country. So, but I feel that the message isn't bit home. 13 people arrested for driving under influence is worryingly high over a four day period mm. in this county. So, again, one arrest for me to me is too, too high. And I'm continue to appeal to all drivers slow down, drive with care, and never ever drink under the influence of alcohol and or drugs. Yeah, never drive in, under them uh, at all with any level of it, of course. Um, right, okay. Now. Greg, ask the guard what happens to the drugs that are seized. That's a, that's a good question. Yeah, it is. So drugs that are seized, uh, if it's a large quantity, they go to Forensic Science of Ireland in Dublin for analysis. Uh, small quantities of drugs, without going to finer details, can be analysed locally. We have some guards trained in that. All drugs then are retained in the safe and in a property book in the drugs office. And... So when they're when they're examined, it either goes to court or it doesn't. So after the court case, the local superintendent authorises the destruction of the drugs and again our guys take them to Dublin where they are destroyed. Okay. Uh, people with northern registration plates on holidays in holiday towns in Donegal drink, drive and go home without being stopped by Gardaí. Do different rules apply to them? So I think what they're saying is, is that uh, motorists from outside the Republic can be found to have broken the laws but they get away with it because they return home to another jurisdiction oh no the same the same rules apply to drivers from any jurisdiction in this country whether you're from Northern Ireland or France Spain America the same rules are road apply speeding uh, seatbelts drink driving and drug driving so the same penalties you'd be brought to court and the same penalties apply so I mean in relation to that caller if they have some concerns to any area to please contact us yeah. and but they can be say you were banned from driving in the Republic. Does that endorsement go on your Northern Irish license? I think it does in the North, yes, okay. but not, 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 in other not in the reverse. Yes. Okay. Uh, I was told when I learned to drive that I'm responsible for those under 17 to use their seatbelts. So is that true or am I responsible for everyone? Now, I was under the impression the driver is responsible for everyone in the car, regardless, regardless of yes, having a seatbelt. You, yes, on. you are obliged as the driver to ensure all passengers in your car wear their seatbelts. But in relation to children, people under 17 years of age. Um, it's an offence for you, the driver, to carry them in your car without them wearing a seatbelt. Mm -hmm. And you can get the fine and the penalty points as well. And also too, uh, because I've seen some enforcement of this, not personally, uh, in terms of what seat the child is in, whether it's appropriate to their height yes, uh, and, and that there are, there are yeah. rules in relation the to relation, that. Rela rules into the age of the child, what type of uh, restraint the child should be what child should it be um, a child seat booster seat or booster child seat, seat or whatever, a great yeah. document on the RSA website and I ask people with children to have a good look at going to the website it explains it in, yeah. in, in great detail yeah because some of your colleagues are quite uh, can be quite pernick not pernickety so that sounds negative but um, 
it, quite good at high in enforcement of that. Right. What is the protocol for driver safety training for, for training for those using scooters? Back to the scooters. Okay, I've, scooters I've are illegal this a few now, months ago. Yes, I dealt like, with these a few months ago. And right. Just very briefly, it, scooters and electric bikes will be dealt with under the Road Traffic and Roads Act of 2023. It was enacted um, and it changes the definition of mechanically propelled vehicles and it deals with a new type of vehicle which were going to be called powered personnel transporters that is e-scooters okay so the law is not in legislation yet uh, i'm told to our 12 of the act which applies will come into force in we're told quarter two of 24 now at the beginning of quarter two so sometime between the now and the end of june it will be enacted or it'll come into to effect and it just deals with the different types of scooters and the, the, the speed that they can get up to uh, and the the, um, the power output in different classes of scooters but at the minute it's not but at the minute I'm told scooters are illegal yep okay that's that's where we're at uh, but we'll see then uh, what the enforcement plan is when when that's enacted in this quarter uh, Garda Sergeant Union Walsh as always thank you Greg thank you really for appreciate you calling the rest in. of the week short you week too. for you it is always uh, for me people would say it's always a short week but it's not but thanks very much Union uh, right that was Community Garda information for this Tuesday the 2nd of April 2024 uh, we'll have that posted on our social media and on Garda Shia Khan our social media a little later on if you want to catch up on any of those items or double check some details if you might have some information it's back for you live in the show after uh, the 10 o'clock news next tuesday watch the show live now on youtube facebook and at highlandradio.com ryan adams is back on tour in 2024 join highland radio on our trip to dublin to see the man himself at the three arena on tuesday the 21st of may 2024 your trip includes luxury transfers bed and breakfast at the four Star Carton Hotel Blanchestar, your standing ticket to the show, and a shopping trip to Dublin City Centre the following day. Find out more on the outlet at highlandradio.com or call us on 074 91 25000. Rossview Interiors massive Easter sale is now on with huge discounts across a range of sofas, bedroom furniture, lighting and dining sets. So don't miss a real bargain this Easter at Rossview Interiors, Rossview Business Park, Letterkenny, just off the Post Star Roundabout, the home of better deals. Join me, Marty Freel, this and every Friday night from 8 for Rocking Hits on Highland Radio in association with Arena 7 Letter Kenny. If you're celebrating a birthday or a work night out, Arena 7 Entertainment Complex has it all. Check out arena7.ie. The CFC Interior Stock Disposal Sale is now on. Due to renovations, an incredible £1.5 million worth of stock must go. Don't miss our highest ever discount on selected ranges across all departments. The Stock Disposal Sale at CFC Interiors Dairy Cooks Town and Abbey Centre. Seal now on. Across Ireland, more than 1.6 million homes, farms and businesses have been upgraded to a smart electricity meter. And ESB Networks is continuing the rollout of smart meters in your area, connecting more of us to a cleaner electric future. One of the benefits of your smart meter is being able to find out more about your daily usage, regardless of who your electricity supplier is. Get started by signing up today for your online account. Visit esbnetworks.ie. ESB Networks. Energising your everything. The Big Easter Sale is now on at Cooney's Home Interiors with 20% off all departments, excluding existing offers. That's huge discounts on all suites, tables, beds and accessories. We have many X-Display models in beds and sofas all reduced to clear. Treat yourself to a bargain at the Easter Sale in Cooney's Home Interiors, Letterkenny Retail Park. Sale ends Sunday the 7th of April. And you're very welcome back to the programme. Sorry, just... Uh doing some producing with Donna Marie on the fly there. I was out of the studio, but it was in the safe hands of uh, Sean Quinn. Hi, Sean. Absolutely not in the safe hands, and now we're starting to panic there. Really? Don't <laughs> panic? Just relax, man. Which bottom just of the hat will I go? None. That one or that just one? Just chill, man. 
Right, OK. Um, do you know, time's going so quick. It feels like this was yesterday, but it's not at all. Uh, we are launching uh, the hugely successful... Uh, they were in 2023 Highland Radio Customer Services Award. They are back, and they're back in association with uh, McElhinney's uh, department store. Right, so uh, we were wondering, was it a one-trick uh, pony? But certainly not. It's back for year two, Sean, and why yeah, not? Yeah, yeah, back for year two. And delighted, Greg, because um, I think the feel at the time is everybody in the room enjoyed it, win, win or lose. Um, it was a great night. It was well celebrated, and uh, and I think we got it right. So, um, and, and I, I, I kind of know we got it right in the sense that um, when I approached McElhenney's about sponsorship, they were absolutely delighted to come on board. There was no hard sell. They were just so impressed with the actual evening and how it, how it went. So what we wanted to do is look and see, can we get bigger and better? Uh, and I think today we're launching something that will be bigger and better. Yeah, and this is really... The Customer Service Awards, it, it does what it says in the tin, but this is actually really customers, us, out and about spending our hard-earned cash uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, um, thanking, appreciating the people that, that serve us, that do amazing work in doing so. So these are the People's Awards. This is the public in endorsing uh, their local businesses and uh, right across a range of categories. But that public input to this and I think we had you know well over 10,000 votes last year that public input into this is critical it's important because yeah. we are really identifying the creme de la creme of business of business yeah absolutely and it was actually over 16,000 right. nominations that we got and and you're right what you're saying Greg because it's it's recognizing it's your customers recognizing what you do for them and I think that's important too because then you know that you're doing things right and if you're not, then it's you look at your business and say, how do we make things better? Mm -hmm. um, and, and I know that I, I was contacted by a few businesses last year to say, you know, we, we, didn't, we didn't get nominated. And I was quite clear and I said that you didn't get involved. Um, go and ask if, you're, if, you're, if your customers are happy with you, they will actually nominate you. Um, and, that's, and that's where the call out this year would be if you didn't, if you didn't go and get involved last year, this is the year to do it. And what we have to this year, because it's the second year, we have an opportunity for businesses to be multi-award winners. Okay, so this is not uh, one bite to the cherry here. You could have a business, be it in retail, community and professional services, house and home, motor home, lifestyle, health and beauty, that you can be a multi-award uh, winner in the Highland Radio Customer Services Award, which would be very prestigious in and of itself. But that also uh, does not preclude, as you've just been saying, people to get involved in it. Sometimes mm. we don't... Uh, and I think it's uh, an Irish guilt thing that sometimes we're not very good at blowing our own trumpets. But if yeah. I have a business in any of these categories, I'm saying, if you're happy with our service, please vote for me. Absolutely. Uh, and what happens is, is we get a great spread of businesses from right across the region. And then we have some expert independent judges yep. that go through everything and uh, eventually announce our winners. So these are incredibly uh, prestigious. And it's been fantastic to see businesses. In fact, I was in an award winning business last year. Yesterday uh, afternoon in the Old Glen Bar, I had a lovely pull uh, from the beer box. I had a pulled rib sandwich. I'm lovely. starving. So I don't want to <laughs> what was I talking about? My point is, is though, I wasn't listening to you. Uh, no, but my point is that, um, you, you know, it, it is a, a lovely moniker to have that you are a customer services awards yeah. winner because these are the public, it's the public Absolutely. that's choosing. Absolutely. And do you know, Greg, you're. You're right in saying that also because I've been in numerous businesses, the winners from last year, and every single one of them has the the trophy displayed mm -hmm. for all to see. Um, so they're proud of it. And you know how do you get involved with this? Is is you um, you go social media wise, and um, we have uh, you can download a form from our website, and it gives you the opportunity to vote for, in each different section, um, or you can you can download it and actually print it and put it into your shop. So if, if customers are coming in, ask them and just say, are you happy with what we did today for so you? So these are templates, effectively, Absolutely. that we have available for you to put up in your business saying, yep. please vote for me in the Highland Radio, blah, blah, blah. Uh, right, so uh, the categories, as I say, include retail, community and professional services, house and home, motor, lifestyle, health and beauty. Some of, uh, Give us an example, then, of some of, the, uh, some of the awards we're talking about within those categories. Hair Salon of the Year. Yeah, so you have Hair Salon of the Year, um, you have Beauty Salon of the Year, you have the Barbers, um, that was actually won last year by Blades, um, Hairstylist Awards, um, Beauty Therapist of the Year, 
We've added um, bridal hair and makeup as well this year to it. Um, nail salon. Um, car and, dealer of the year is in yeah, there. Yeah, there's car dealer of the year. So you've got a, actually salesperson of the year in that one as well. Service uh, department of the year. Um, and transport and travel. Uh, auto parts. So the auto shops as well are included. And tyre services. Yeah. So who got, who I need a tyre, by the way. Huh? I need a tyre. By the way, just saying, you've reminded me, <laughs> I need okay. to tire. Uh, car valet of the year, which, as I say, this is, these are, a lot of them, uh, the categories are areas that are incredibly vibrant. Uh, there's lots of people at them, but ordinarily, how would they get recognised? Takeaway. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. most of us eat in takeaways above restaurants. That's not in any way to bring restaurants down. But if, uh, most of us, if we're having a treat, it's a takeaway, right? But I think sometimes it's seen as... I think it's sometimes seen as in, in a different category, but it's not. It's people yeah. making food for you, and let's recognise our favourite takeaway. As I'm going through these lists, I can think of the businesses that I would nominate, yeah. uh, and also then the community charity organisation sector, that's under community and professional uh, services. And the right. great thing about that, Greg, right, is that it's every town's involved with that. It's not about the main street in Letterkenny or Carindona. Every single town is involved here because we've all got takeaways. We've all got community centres. And we had a situation last year uh, whereby everyone was dressed up to the nines. It was a brilliant night. But you could have, effectively, a, a beautician... Uh, I'll stick with the bees. A beautician collect award and then a butcher collect an award. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think it was in Raffo, the award for the It was butchery. indeed, yeah. The butchery yeah. went to Raffo. Yeah. But that's the type of environment it is we're all of the one community it brings people from all different sort of backgrounds uh all into wedding dressmakers and welders two w's there you go do you know what i mean all <laughs> now, you're, now you're on a flow now <laughs> i think on my feet here uh, flowers no i won't bother with that one uh right okay so um how do you go about nominating in the first instance and then we'll, what we'll do is we'll talk about the nominating if i fancy nominating a business and then we'll recap the businesses saying listen yeah. give us a vote that's an important part so it's live now it's live Live now on highlandradio.com. Just click on the link. It, we've made it as simple as possible. Um, and do do include a little comment because we do look at those and, and they are part of the process. So it'll take you an extra minute maybe just to tell us why you're nominating this business. Mm -hmm. um, and then you just hit the submit button and it comes straight into us. So that'll be open from now and it closes on the 23rd of April. Yep. So you have a window of about three weeks to uh, to, to either look for the votes or to if you're a consumer who wants to vote straight away you can go on there right now and click on the button for the uh, customer service awards it couldn't be any simpler uh, for those of you watching it i'm showing you the website now there are the categories and the subcategories there as well there's motor there's lifestyle community services you nominate you click in there and away you go uh, so no excuses it's made as simple as is possible and again just to reiterate businesses there's a category in there for you if you're in the customer services uh, sector. There's going to be something there for you. Uh, please get involved, get the posters up, get onto your social media, ask your customers to say, listen, thanks. They can give you something back in return for all the great things that you do for them. Uh, right, okay. Now, will you get someone to take the birthday bash off the website? Yeah, we okay. might do that, yeah. No, good stuff. Right? We were, we were, we we're listing the names of the winners up there, so yeah, we'll take that off. I know you're all very busy. I know you're all very busy. Okay, very exciting. So, Sean, website, highlandradio.com. Yep. Click in, bish, yep. bash, bosh. The it's, resources for the businesses uh, to print off and put up in their businesses? That will, that will be on the website within the hour. So Brilliant they can stuff. actually download okay. the PDF and uh, they can print it or they can use it on their social media. What can we say about the actual event it's uh, so, oh, so, oh, you've got yeah. the date here as well, uh, right? No That's all in. Yeah, yeah. No, no secret. It's the 9th of June. It's in the Mount Aragal Hotel. Uh, so we're returning there. We were now, there can I say, the Mount Aragal Hotel, fantastic. It was brilliant. Yeah. Then we had another award ceremony in Ballot Buffet. Top notch. Absolutely brilliant again. Back over to you, Mount Aragal Hotel. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> I know, because at, like when you do the first one, you think the second one, the hospitality, I thought, you know, we've got to get this one right. And, and we did, and, and so did uh, did Jackson's. But I've every confidence that the Mount Arago will deliver. But there's no, and it's going to be slightly more. It will be five hundred and forty. It's a great night out. Is, is the really is the max in the room? Yeah. So we we will sell out, and it will sell out pretty quickly. 
Right, well, let's get the nominations in first. It's live for you right now on our website. Uh, you can go in there and nominate. Um, if, if anyone has a question, so, oh, what category am I in? They can give us a buzz. And of one, one of your yeah. team will sort that yeah, out, yeah, won't you? Yeah, I will. mean, you'll fall into one of the categories, but it, just in case there's any uncertainty, give us a buzz and we'll we'll sort you out there. Right, OK, before I let you go, what's the story with... Uh, I was out of the loop. I kind of disengaged. It money, money, money. Uh, with the makeover, right? It's a 10,000 euro makeover. Just while I have you, might as well get it out of the rate. Save you coming in tomorrow again. Uh, 10,000 euro home uh, makeover uh, plus five grand in cash. So have we given away two and a half grand yes, yet? We How, did. When did that happen on last, Thursday? Last Thursday, we gave it away. Wow, okay. Don't give away two and a half thousand. Nice. It went down to Glenty's. So we did. Uh, so we're, we're going to do the exact same this Friday. So if you've bought a ticket, you're automatically uh, included in this Friday's draw and the big draw. But if you haven't bought a ticket yet, today or tomorrow is the time to do it because mm. we will close off the lines probably around 11 o'clock on Friday. So we've given away two and a half grand. There's another two and a half uh, grand to give away. Uh, it's in pure cash, straight into your pocket. Friday, the 5th of April, that's during this show. And then the following Friday, is it on this programme again, is it? Or is that on... JB. JB. Yeah. And on Jam Bresson's show then, the following Friday on which this competition was launched, someone's going to win a 10,000 euro home makeover in association with Foyne Company, plus five grand in cash. Last time you were in, Sean, I was like going, I could do my whole house. I know. And you run about a room. I was thinking, what kind of a mansion do you live in? <laughs> <laughs> But you see, the thing about it is you can actually do a room by room. You don't have to do everything at the one time. If I got 10 grand, yeah, it would do a lot of the house. I, it, it, yeah, it would, it would definitely do... For me, do, anyway. Like it would do two, a... two nice sitting rooms, it would do. Look at this book. I don't know. Two big sitting rooms. I'm going to have to call around to your house. It must be palatial. But you know what's, the, you know what's nice about this, Greg, is that Foy's will actually sit down and help you design the room. Yeah. And, and we're very lucky to have them on that basis because... They've got uh, experts within the stores in Letterkenny and Bal Buffet who'll sit down and they'll even come to the house to look and see, right, okay, well, we think this will this will be nice here, mm. here, here. And they'll help you through that process, even picking colours for the rooms, carpets for the rooms, whatever it is that you need within that room, they have it and they'll supply it, which is brilliant. Great stuff. Listen, Sean, always a pleasure. Thanks for calling in. Get onto the website now. Support your local business. They do amazing stuff for us. You know, they're the ones that employ our children. They're the ones that uh, sponsor the local raffles. They're the ones that have the prices available. Do you know what I mean? Not all, you know, but the majority of them. They are of us. They are of the community. And let's give them a big uh, thank you by nominating them in the Highland Radio Customer Services Award 2024. If you're a business out there, stick the sign up. Get on your social media. Say, we'd love your support because it's a great night out and it's a great honour. We're going to have, hopefully... Uh, new award winners, but I'd love to see someone say that they were able or a multi award winner. Yeah, yeah, but it's absolutely. really competitive. But why yeah. not? Don't so if you won last year, I'd be looking to get another one on the shelf. Do you know that's a balance out the fireplace? Uh, Sean's massive marble fireplace <laughs> in one of his front in one of his front in my rooms. third room there. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got a sitting room and a front room, don't you? You're that type. No, I've no, I've I've got a playroom. No, right, okay. What's in there? Dartboard. Everything that shouldn't Snooker, be uh, anywhere in the house. Ah. Pool table? There's dartboard, yeah. There's dartboard, that's, the, right. that's the very popular... Do you popular have a mini bar? Moment. Pardon? Do you have a mini bar? No, 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 no. no. Not allowed <laughs> that. 10,000 euro. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I get. A mini, a mini bar, bar in the house and outside the house. All right, OK. Be Drink responsibly, folks. Uh, be full of zero zeros. All right, uh, that's it. We'll be back with more in the Nine Till Noon show after this break. Uh, but in the meantime, get onto the website, highlandradio.com. Creative Landscaping Works are the Donegal distributors of millboard cladding and decking. Thanks to its unique polymer resin construction, this decking and cladding doesn't deteriorate like natural wood and won't be beaten for durability. It also has superb slip resistance, even when wet, and every board is produced using recycled materials. Live life outside with millboard at Creative Landscaping Works, Liss Nennon Letter Kenny. See creativelandscapingworks.com. The Logan Easter sale is now on. Fly from City of Derry Airport to London Heathrow and Glasgow. Save up to 15% off over 1 million seats across the Logan Air network. Book by 2nd April. Travel from 26th April. Subject to availability, exclusion supply. Visit loganair.co.uk. Logan Air. Your journey, our joy. Make more meals for less with Dunn Stores, where you'll save in the aisle with ingredients for delicious sausage pasta bake. That's eight pork sausages, just one euro. Baked in a delicious bolognese sauce with peppers, red onions and fusilli pasta, just 70 cent for 500 grams, topped with 65 cent mozzarella cheese, all from the Dunn Stores range. 
Plus, you can save at the till with a five-off 25 grocery voucher. Dunn Stores. Always better value. Terms and conditions apply. Voucher abuse to next in-store grocery shop of 25 euro or more. It all begins with a thrump as the needle nestles into a deep valley of vinyl. Sizzle and crackle turns into fizzle and scratch. And the mesmerising rotations of pop and hiss and... Ah, the crackle of a vinyl record. Just one of the ordinary sounds rediscovered by Sean. Whatever sounds you've lost, our hearing experts could help you find them again. Search Specsavers Hearing. Highland Radio Weather Updates brought to you by Michael Hennies. Support a local Donegal business with Michael Hennies. From fashion to home essentials, find everything you need for any occasion. Shop Michael Hennies Valley Buffet for quality you can trust. OK, plenty of dry weather today with a mix of cloud, bright spells and a few showers. Highest temperatures of uh, 10 to 12 degrees. Largely dry early tonight, but outbreaks of rain and drizzle will spread from the south during the course of the night. Temperatures 5 to 8 degrees with moderate to fresh northeast winds developing. Thank you so much for all of your contacts over the course of this morning. Very much appreciated. Um, nurses in Australia work less than a 12-hour day. Some can work 9 to 5. They've around 5 patients to deal with. In Ireland, you've around 15. There's less pressure in Australia. The conditions all around are better. Morning. I've sat uh, many a long day in the ED with my late father. I've observed many, many people who I felt didn't need to be there. If medical card patients, not the elderly, were charged a small fee, A&E would not be as busy. Unfortunately, it's a day out for some. Example, I went with my dad during the last big rugby match. Uh, Arden played in the World Cup last year and it was empty. I said, gosh, it's quiet. And the nurse replied, yeah, just wait till you see it when the match is over. Now, the one thing I'll say about that is the, the concern, the, the pressure... Uh, in any of the hospitals around the country are not just people sitting there with a broken fingernail. Uh, the pressure comes from people who are deemed ill enough to be tran- uh, to be admitted to the hospital. So when you see trolley watch uh, figures that are published daily, those aren't just people that have turned up uh, for the day out, uh, which I don't think anyone would see as a day out of crack. They are um, deemed ill enough to be admitted to the hospital and speaking to people because this has come up before so I wanted to ask people who were down there uh, and very few people I'm told of those that are there don't need to be there very few now I'm not saying it doesn't happen but it's certainly not the cause of what we're seeing hi Greg JK Rowling referred to the transgender woman as biological men I think you left out the word biological no I didn't um, in her tweet she just said they're all men uh, she never went mentioned the word uh, biological maybe she has in the past but certainly not in the tweet that's being quoted by the papers in fact I can actually read the last line of it for you if you wish um, where is it it's here somewhere. Anyway, it'll t- take me a while to dig it out. But anyway, be that as it may, uh, she referred. I'll read the last tweet here if I can get to it. Uh, April Fools, only kidding. Obviously, the people mentioned in the above tweets aren't women at all, but men, every last one of them. So there was no reference to uh, the word biological there. There's no such uh, thing uh, as being a transgender woman. It's a man identifying as a woman, and all the laws they try to bring in will never change that fact. That's the language that they choose to use. Um, uh, they choose to define themselves as a transgender woman. Now, whether you disagree with that or not, it doesn't take away the fact that they, that's what uh, a, a transgender woman believes. Now, you believe it's a man identifying as a woman. Um, not too far away in reality. It's just that word transgender that seems to be the, the difference there. Greg, something very badly wrong. Our own people, houses falling apart. Uh, the government's spending money like this and others to bring uh, them here and our, and our own leave in the country. Another, uh, there should be no football on Easter Sunday or Saturday. The teams don't get the amount of supporters they should. Uh, what do you think about that? I thought Croke Park yesterday was quite well attended. Um, sorry, yesterday was Monday, Sunday. Um, Armagh always bring the crowd. They've got a great travelling support. Maybe it's because of the um, uh, because of the, the travel options that they have that we wouldn't hear coming from the northwest. Uh, and Dublin always pull the crowd as well. Uh, yep, I thought it was uh, really, really interesting. Uh, another piece of interesting news which is just emerging but doesn't surprise me, uh, Enterprise Minister Simon Coveney has announced he's stepping down from Cabinet. He says he won't be making himself available to serve as a minister when the Dáil resumes next week. In a post on X, Simon Coveney said he spoke to Fine Gael leader Simon Harris last night to inform 
inform him of his decision. Mr Coveney said he will continue to work as a proud TD for Cork South Central and will, of course, actively support the government in the Dáil. It's very possible, maybe, that uh, Simon Coveney doesn't get on with Simon Harris, I don't know, but also that maybe he was going to be moved from his portfolio because there's bound to be a little bit of a reshuffle. It's in a bit of a mess, isn't it? You start wondering, maybe, do we need a, do we need an election to sort this, this all out? Discover full and part-time courses from Level 2 to Master's Degree at the College of Agriculture, Food and Rural Enterprise. Caffrey, Northern Ireland's specialist agri-food and land-based college with campuses at Greenmount, Antrim, Lowry, Cookstown and Enniskillen. Study a course in food, agriculture, horticulture, equine, floristry, veterinary, nursing, land-based engineering or business. Make a difference. Book now to attend an open day, Tuesday 9th to Saturday 13th of April. Visit cafre.ac.uk. Here at Tesco Mobile, we've gone and opened a new phone shop in Letterkenny High. A great wee spot now for a few good deals, like saving €320 Euro when you buy the iPhone 13 for €129.99 Euro on our €35 Euro plan high. So why not stop in and say hi, uh, hello, to Tesco Mobile High. This is Supermarket Mobile. Applies to new bill pay customers on our €35 Euro per month plan. 24-month contract offer ends 1st of May 2024. T's and C's apply. See tescomobile.ie. Your specialty is quality tiles, bathroom suites and wooden floors. Who is the best range of tiles in Donegal? Crawford Tiles. The best wood flooring? Crawford Tiles. The best bathroom suites? Crawford Tiles. Five-day bathroom refits? Crawford Tiles. And who's been tampering with my questions? That'll be me. Crawford Tiles, Castle Finn. That'll be them. 07491 43942. Attention all sports fans. O'Neill Sportswear have an amazing clearance sale happening in their Straban warehouse. For four days only from Thursday through till Sunday, you'll find everything you need to look and feel the best on the field. From jerseys to shorts, tees to hoodies, they've got it all. We'll see you there. O'Neill's. Live for it. The county's number one talk show, The Nine Till Noon Show on Highland Radio. Okay, it is 11 o'clock. Let's get a news update and it's over to Michaela Clark. Thanks, Greg. Good morning. 13 people were arrested in Donegal over the Easter bank holiday weekend for drink or drunk driving. Gardaí were out in force between Thursday and this morning, conducting checkpoints, patrols and speed checks. As a result, fixed charge penalty notices were also issued for various offences and a number of vehicles seized. Sergeant Juna Walsh says one arrest for driving under the influence is one too many. Simon Coveney is stepping aside from Cabinet. The current Enterprise Minister says he spoke to Fine Gael leader Simon Harris last night to inform him he would not be making himself available to serve as a minister when the Dáil resumes next week. He says he'll continue to work as a Pride TD for Cork South Central. A public meeting to discuss the consistent pressure on Donegal's healthcare service is taking place tomorrow. It's in response to concerns from staff at Letterkenny University Hospital, paramedics and patients. Elected public representatives and local election and European election candidates are being urged to attend the meeting tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock at the Mount Errigal Hotel in Letterkenny to outline how they plan to address the widespread issues. The Education Minister says parents need to be informed about the impact smartphones and social media are having on their children. Norma Foley says she's been told there's been a sharp rise in 7 to 10 year olds taking sexual images of themselves with predators using apps to groom them. She's described the increase as shocking and appalling and is urging parents to delay giving their kids phones. Guardies say there has been an increase in reports of hit and run incidents in shopping or retail car parks. Motorists have an obligation to report all incidents of damage caused to Gardaí. Sergeant Juno Walsh has warned that failing to do so will result in hefty fines being issued. Investigations are underway into break-ins at two vacant properties in Ballyshannon in recent weeks. Damage was caused to the front door of a holiday home in the Tubber Cavan Garden area and entry gained. Meanwhile, in the same area, the front door of another property was forced open and the house ransacked. Gardaí believe the burglaries, which have only recently been reported, may be connected and may have occurred between March the 1st and 30th. Meanwhile, the window of a business premises in Carndonna was smashed during an early morning criminal damage incident yesterday. Between 2 and 3 a.m., the damage was caused to the business premises at Chapel Street. Gardaí are appealing for information. Those are the latest headlines. We'll be back with an update again at 12 noon. Michaela, thank you very much indeed. <laughs> 
an epic new Disney Plus original, Renegade Nell. Who is this, Nelly Jackson? A highway woman. <gasps> she fights as though she's possessed. She's formidable. Get after her! Meet the highway woman, who's a bit of a legend. A word of warning. <laughs> you don't want to mess with me. <laughs> Renegade Nell. Now streaming exclusively on Disney Plus. 18 plus subscription required. T's and C's apply. Now, uh, Ian McGarvey says, how many patients go through the hospital? I'd say it's around 60,000. Staff are frustrated. I think there should be an initial assessment to allocate measures properly. TDs need to step up now to fight for our hospital. Um, how many extra cars go on the road every day, week and month? The roads are getting busy. I know that's not an excuse, but that is what's happening yeah, indeed, of course. Um, but you match the infrastructure, of course, should match the demand, uh, shouldn't they? Right, now, I'm joined in studio um, by Louise McCormick. Louise, thanks so much for joining us. How are you keeping? Good, good. Yeah, it's good, good to have you in the programme, good to have you in studio. Right, OK. Now, um, you would be a, a social media user. Yeah, is for sure. Is TikTok your preferred platform? or uh, I actually use LinkedIn more than anything else. Really? I don't TikTok. get that. I don't see LinkedIn as social media. I've never got my head around it. Yeah, I, I guess I don't post on it a lot, but like that's where I've gotten like a lot of my jobs. And okay, like cool. Yeah, right, yeah. maybe that's what I need yeah. to do. I'll stay afterwards, give me some advice, maybe I'm only messing. Right, OK, so um, whilst you were on TikTok... You started seeing a trend in the For You page and some of the videos that you have been delivered. Talk to me about that. Yeah, so I guess, like, last year I started seeing a lot of, like, posts around ADHD and it was all very relatable stuff. And I thought, oh, God, I guess this is, like, it's very relatable. Everybody has that. But then I started seeing a lot a lot of them and I started to think, well, this actually sounds a lot a lot like me. And, um, yeah, so I went to, my, went to my GP and went through the process of getting diagnosed with ADHD. Uh, so uh, thanks to TikTok, which is... Uh, <laughs> And of course, the For You page depends on how long you watch a video and how you interact with it. So obviously, it was picking up on this, you know, piquing your interest. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's actually uh, interesting for me, particularly because I'm doing a PhD in ethical AI. So the ethics around people getting diagnosed with ADHD is, uh, is, is certainly an interesting one and something to think about for the future. But yeah, TikTok pioneered an algorithm, which it's, it's the most addictive algorithm. So it works in real time by literally looking at like, just the tiniest extra pause on a video, it can profile you and know exactly what to send you next to keep you on the platform. So, yeah, it's... it's and it's, it is yeah. amazing. And if you compare it to Facebook, you know, you establish maybe 5,000 or whatever it is, uh, the limit is 5,000 friends or what have you, and they don't change, really. I mean, some will filter out, some will filter in, but basically you end up in this sort of echo chamber eventually, and you see that a lot of the same information, and it's personal information, that's fine, all that kind of... TikTok can change. You, you could stop being interested in something and instantly it's own right. You seem to be a little bit more, more interested in that. It's really quite remarkable, isn't it? It's, uh, it's, it's actually scary. It's uh, yeah. Out of anything that I'm studying, people are saying, oh, what about ChatGPT? What about anything mm -hmm. like this? Uh, but actually, f for me, the scariest things, uh, they're called black box algorithms. They're algorithms where we don't know what happens in them. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times the companies don't know what happens in them. And uh, yeah, it's scary. It's scary because you could, you could literally group a bunch of people and say, here's all these people. Here's what they think. Let's make them think this, and 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 you can you can very easily change change that. I, sure. I very much thought before we start talking about what we invited you for, I uh, was very much, and I said it on this program going back well over a year now, uh, wondering how AI will change our lives, right? Uh, and I thought it's going to be really significant, and and there's no doubt it will have an impact. But as things have progressed, and I've seen the different different variations of it and the different issues with it, you know, be it the the gawk from from uh, Elon Musk or what have you, or the others. Um, the being overly woke and them trying to counterbalance all that kind of stuff. I don't know. I'm, I'm starting to wonder: is it is it going to be quite as impactful as as perhaps we we once first uh, first thought? Um, I, I think it's already doing it. I think people have started talking about it now because they see these conversational AI products like uh, like like uh, ChatGPT. But actually, we've been using AI. It's so heavily integrated into our lives in ways that most people don't even realize. Like there's a, a, a concept called, like say in, in, in the States, they use it, they use AI for their judiciary system. So they they use AI to predict, uh, for like recidivism is basically a person's likelihood to reoffend. So they'll use AI to calculate how likely someone is to reoffend and use that to decide their sentence. And that that's AI and it's proven to be 
uh, racist. It's proven to be re- extremely un- unethical. It's and it's already biases, yeah. isn't it? Isn't yeah. It? So yeah. Pe- people aren't scared of Google, but Google is a you know private company which has the ability to show you um, what's important when you search for something. You search for something, Google decides what the reality you see is, and people haven't really thought about that. Mm-hmm. But when you search for something, that's one one piece. But the new trend now is you're not even searching for something. You're just scrolling through your newsfeed and you're being fed. You know, the front page of the newspaper I used to work for, um, Media House, uh, like the Irish Independent, Tele- Belfast Telegraph. The front page of the newspaper used to be the, f- the most important bit of news, but it's not the most important bit of news anymore. Now the front page of the newspaper is your For You page. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's, it's terrifying because you don't even know what, what, what anyone else is seeing. Wow. You know? and, and also to... <clears throat> Particularly, this is not necessarily AI related, but particularly since Elon Musk's acquisition of Twitter uh, and, and and what he calls it X now, it's uh, it, there is a complete blurring of like he tries to frame it as if this is where the truth happens, right? But the 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 lines between what is true and what's not true now are indistinguishable. Like you can Twitter yesterday on April Fool's Day, right? It would be very, very difficult for you to figure out what was an actual April Fool's joke and what was being purported to be real or what actually was real. Yeah. It's crazy. I don't know if we're going to get a reset on that, but I'm finding that platform particularly unusable. Yeah, completely. What is ADHD in your mind as an adult? Right, and we'll talk about sort of how maybe a lot of your younger life makes a little bit more sense. But when you were looking at these TikTok videos, which we started talking about about 10 minutes ago, like when you started recognising things or traits or stuff in you, how how would you describe that? Yeah, so ADHD is is a really um, difficult to understand because there's so many comp- complicated parts of it. On one end, people with ADHD have the ability to hyper-focus, to like really sit down for hours and just completely dedicate themselves to something and then in the other end of it, people say, okay, well, it's uh, you're distracted, you can't focus. Mm. So it's ADHD is essentially a, a chemical difference in the brain. So it's just a completely different way of, of, of being. And it's estimated, I think, that one in 20 kids have ADHD. Um, and it's estimated lower in adults, but the reality is, you, you know, it's probably probably much higher because it's underdiagnosed. Uh, we're getting, yeah, exactly. That we're not looking for it in adults as much as we are in children. So obviously that's going to be a disparity, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's just a, it's just a completely different way of your brain being 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 set up, um, you know, and, and and how that kind of impacts your life. Then it, it usually it, it, there's there's so many symptoms. So positive symptoms are things like the ability to hyper focus, be able to sit down and really dedicate, and you know, some people can have a lot of success off the back of that because they get into something niche and they become very successful in that area um but then equally if you know if you don't find something that you're really interested in or you really struggle you can become not focused not able to study not doing you know well in school things like that uh, it can happen as well um yeah and then of course you'd be selective on what you could and couldn't focus on it would have to obviously attract you in and for other things you'd be like i can't focus on so you can be the same you can be on both ends of the spectrum in the same person then yeah, yo, in, in the in the same five met, minutes. <laughs> if, you, if you met you on yeah. two different days or in, in two different minutes, okay. Yeah. Um, right, so I want, to, I want to go back to your story and then I want to go back to the, the reality of diagnosis and stuff. So did, did a lot of your your being as a young person make a lot more sense once you were diagnosed? Like particularly I'm thinking in, you know, in, in primary school and in secondary school. Yeah, so I guess part of the reason why I wasn't diagnosed, and I think it's the case for, uh, because it's it's very, very underdiagnosed in girls and women because, you know, societal norms, people tend to mask their ADHD much, much more successfully uh, because they, they kind of have to as, as girls or women. Uh, so for me, I actually really liked primary school, so I was able to very much focus. You know, the primary school teacher said, to my parents, you know, wow, I've, I've never seen a child sit there and focus in a book and focus on her work like like I did because I was hyper-focusing all the time. So I got to really excel in primary school. But were other things picked out about your behaviour in primary school that weren't <laughs> quite as favourable? Yeah, so I guess, like, I had very messy handwriting. I kind of struggled at, you know, some subjects I didn't like, so spelling, I, I struggled to sit down and do that. I just found myself, I wanted to be good at it, mm. but I found myself unable to do it. Um things like not planning stories properly, just excitedly rushing things, you know, just rushing, rushing, yeah, rushing. Yeah. Um, but, but you know, that, that, that was okay. It was in secondary school really where there's a lot less, there's a lot less um, st- structure. You're responsible for your own deadlines a lot more. And that's where I slowly started to kind of drop, mm. you know. Before yeah. we get to that, what's rejection sensitivity? Rejection sensitivity is where, uh, I, I guess it's, 
it kind of how it sounds, isn't it? It's uh, being more sensitive yeah. to rejection. So, like, for example, if you felt different in primary school, like I was bullied in primary school and I, I would have taken that probably harder than yeah, yeah. another kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Or if you saw two mates playing and you felt you weren't invited, that would pain you more, perhaps. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so secondary school. So then um, how did you do at secondary school? Yeah. Academically, like? Yeah, fine. I did a, a okay leaving cert enough to... But coming up to, to exam college. time, could you could you structure your studying over the year? No, no, no. Right, it was, that's, it, a, that's a big no-no. I mean, I, I, would sit in, I would sit in classes and just not be able to focus. I'd be mm. falling asleep, I'd be daydreaming, and then I'd be panicking when there was a test. My parents sent me to evening study every single day since first year. But when you saw a line, you could put your head down. So say, for instance, there was a deadline for an exam, you could cram a lot in. Could you just on the brink of that? Yes. Is that what gave you your focus? And then you could... Yeah. Uh, So then how about working independently? And I'm thinking homework, because there's a big focus on homework right now. So you have the structure of the class system and that. How, How does... Did for you because everyone's different. How did ADHD, ADHD do you think affected your ability to study uh, independently? I, I just couldn't. I just couldn't. Uh, and you know, I, I was never trying to be like bold in school. I, I didn't want to be bold, but like I, I would literally sit there with my bag unopened and I'd be sitting in a. I was s- s- sent to go study in our school. We had an option to stay for two hours and do study. My parents paid for me to go there. Um, I just wouldn't be able to. I, my bag would be here and I'd just be sitting there like, I can't do this. Mm. I, I remember borrowing like books from kids in other years than me that weren't even on my course and sitting there and reading them. And, uh, you know, th- that's what I would do for, for the two hours. Did, did, uh, speaking to those around you now, uh, and I suppose reflecting, did anyone pick anything up at all uh, during your primary, secondary school to say that maybe, you know, Louise and we could get an assessment or... I, I had one teacher who uh, pulled me up because my grades were fairly good. Mm. And like, you know, I was getting kind of B's and C's and even some subjects I really liked, I was getting A's. But I had one teacher who uh, pulled me to the earhead and she said, uh, you know, you're, you're getting C's in the subject now and it's not, you know, it's not, it's not good enough. And brought me to the earhead and the earhead said, you know, what's the problem? And I said, I don't know. It's, um, I, think, I feel like I'm doing okay. You know, I'm, mm. I'm getting, getting a C. And I knew I wasn't doing well. I knew there was a problem, but... You knew what to say as well. I knew what to say. And then, you know, the teacher ended up kind of looking like she was kind of nearly in the wrong for, mm-hmm. for trying to help me, mm-hmm. you know, because I was getting like C's and, you know, B's. I was like, oh, I'm doing okay, you know, but, but I, I wasn't. protecting yourself as well too, you know. Yeah. Uh, so what about college life then? Uh, how does, because now we're into a completely different space because, you know, the all the responsibility, you know, if you learn how to make spaghetti bolognese and everything. <laughs> but how did college life, how did college life with undiagnosed ADHD, ADHD treat you? it's pretty much the same as secondary school so yeah. it was um some really really good modules that i was really really focused on that i got a's in and modules then that i scraped by and it was the same uh, my, my undergrad and masters are both very practical so it was lucky for me in that aspect that i could kind of uh yeah focus on those things right so you eventually did get a, an adhd uh, diagnosis is it a hard process uh, or, or was it like oh yeah it's 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 almost impossible in Ireland. Like first, you have to nearly diagnose yourself, mm. right? You nearly have to figure it out by yourself because people aren't picking it up. You know, uh, as I say, especially not in girls and women, mm-hmm. people aren't picking it up. So you have to nearly know yourself, and then you can go to your GP. I have a very good GP here in Donegal, and you know he has other pa- other patients with uh, ADHD, so he he knew a bit about it, but. A lot of the time people don't. But you literally have to go in and go, I think I might have ADHD. Can you signpost yeah. me? If, if you've been diagnosed, like the thing about ADHD is that you can, if you can function, like I obviously functioned, my ADHD drove me to do crazy things. I've traveled everywhere, done everything. I've done just crazy things that um, someone said to me recently, God, it looks like your ADHD really made you live a bit of an unreal life. And I'm like, yeah, in it certain, does, certain yeah. ways it has. But when you stop being able to function, when things start to struggle and this happens. How does that co- look? What does that look like? In, in, in COVID, it's what happened for me anyways, mm. because normally if I'm like needing more dopamine, uh, I just go do something that gives me that. And so I can just do that. But when the lockdown hit, the things that you do to keep yourself going, uh, those things weren't there. So you end up, and, and this happened to a lot of people, but for me, you end up becoming depressed. Mm. People think you have anxiety or depression and you're like, well, I guess, you know, and, and maybe people do have those things, but a lot of people who are diagnosed with anxiety and depression, um, it doesn't look like ADHD. 
but th- that's what it is. So, I mean, obviously then there are people we are treating, you know, chemically even for anxiety, depression, when really it's probably a non, for some, as I say, uh, a non-diagnosed, uh, like if we had an ADHD diagnosis, it would make an awful lot more sense. But other than things making more sense now, right? So in other words, you know, your your primary school life, your secondary school life, your college life, and the way you live your adult life, what advantage is there for you, Louise, in getting an ADHD diagnosis so late? I would say it's life-changing to get a diagnosis. How? Why? So it's it's difficult for me to explain it, but your brain just works so fundamentally differently than other, other people. I did a, uh, like a, a course in the university that I'm studying in. Um, it was like a, you know, program with other people who have ADHD. And just going through that program and understanding techniques of how to understand what's happening in your brain because it's it's so completely different than what's happening in other people's brains understanding like how your senses are impacting you understanding how to i, I don't know f- feel yourself and understand yourself I, I think it's about how your consciousness works your consciousness is a strange thing and i think too if you if you sometimes it's hard so say you suffer from anxiety or, or what have you a lot of it is your, it's your, your voice, your inner voice or your consciousness or what have you. And then someone who doesn't have that, you can't explain it to them. Because whilst you're thinking the same thing over and over again and worrying or thinking and worrying or thinking, you know it doesn't make sense, but you can't stop yourself doing it. So it, it's, for me, like, it's not what your brain's doing, it's your consciousness or that's how it shows, right? I'd be fascinated to have your thinking mind for five minutes to understand. Do you, does that make sense? It does. You know, so yeah. I want to know what how you felt coming in here or can you do you find yourself talking to people and able to fully engage in that conversation but think about other things at the same time that's, i i can really do that that's an interesting one uh the, the the medication for adhd if people opt to take that uh that it's not something i i don't know for for me personally it's not something i'd want to do for my whole life but the experience of the medication allows the person to, with ADHD Clarity. to understand yeah. how somebody with ADHD doesn't think yeah. and like because people with ADHD tend to find each other a lot of my friends have it and you know we're all getting diagnosed in our 30s and I, I've seen a few of them being like wow like this is how other people's yeah, brains yeah. are like like you're just listening it's, it's horrible to think that before this I didn't understand the full process of listening but you certainly can train yourself to focus and and improve on those things, you know. But you can be doing an everyday task that requires conversation but still continue to think about something else. It's not even that you want to think about something else. It's that your brain needs yeah, to yeah, be yeah, doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that's, you get that with anxiety and stuff as well. But then, in terms of medication, right, you don't want to blunt yourself either, do you? Because to some extent, you know, chemically it switches certain things off. You know, not everyone's going to sort of, you know, struggle for... to it can still function perfectly in, in everyday life, right? But it will turn off some of you, potentially, right? It does. So how do you... Uh, you know, especially considering that this ADHD has given you quite an exciting life, right? You're an adrenaline junkie. I don't know how you describe yourself. I don't know your background, but it sounds to me like you could be. Uh, so do you really want to switch some of that those, those some of that off? It's a it's it's a balance for me. It's about like I certainly don't want to like I like the kind of hyper side. I like to be excited about things and and you know I, I like that part of me um, now that I understand it more. Um, but yeah, I for for me, I do I do like that and to turn that off for the rest of my life, I definitely wouldn't enjoy that. No, not at all. But it's it's a balance, you know. It's a balance. It's about it's but just about learning and understanding. Sometimes is it nice to sort of switch it off so you can see the wood for the trees? Yeah, for uh, sure. And then that gives you a little bit of. Uh, it gives you a little bit of satisfaction that if it ever becomes overwhelming, you can do something about it. But at this stage of my life, things are good. I can handle it, so on and so forth, right? Um, do you find yourself mixing better with people with ADHD than people without it? Yeah, I would say my life is surrounded by neurodivergent people by accident. Just all my friends are pretty much people I met in first year in college. We've been friends for 15, 16, 17 years. Like, and... L- like most of them are like neuro- neurodivergent. Yeah. Do you think we're all neurodivergent to some extent? Now we are, I suppose, in the in the literal sense of it. But I just wonder, like, I, I wonder if I went through a diagnosis process, I think something would come up. I think something would flag it. You know, because I, I do a lot of these interviews about, you know, and then an awful lot made sense. 
Mm-hmm. I think <laughs> some of that might work for me. Um, they say one I mean. in 20 people or something like that is neurodivergent in some way. Like, people are saying, like, it, it, it's, a, it's a part of our evolution. You know, there's a really interesting study from uh, a, a re- really interesting person who talks about this and has been writing and publishing papers since the 90s called uh, Tom Hartman. And he talks about this hunter versus a farmer lifestyle and how these differences in our brains evolved with us. So like the human evolution period is millions of years, you know, even Homo sapiens, a couple of hundred thousand years. So these evolutions were advantageous to societies. It was important to have somebody who could take risks, be super creative, think outside the box, uh, hyper-focus. Like those are really positive benefits to have a, a certain portion of those people in society. Um, but now our society has become very rigid. We're, our school system was literally designed to um, produce people who could work in factories, right? Mm-hmm. And we're moving away from needing people to work in factories now, but our school system is still the same. So everybody's struggling in that school system, mm-hmm. but more so people who are neurodivergent because it, it just doesn't work so for that brain. So what are you saying? Are we, are we like ants that, you know, in, in our Rory's form, we were like ants where some ants have a role. So some are gatherers, some are builders, some are protectors. Uh, and there was more definition in us humans, and now that's all been blurred a little bit. Is, is that kind of the space we're in? Well, I mean, j- just generally, I think that humans all have uh, a part to play. And you, you, your brain, your approach, mm. your personality. I think that just as a society, I we've suppose, always had yeah. a nice blend of a blend of people. But the school system should be identify, be able to identify people's areas of speciality, shouldn't it? Like I have these conversations with 15, 16 year olds, like. And they haven't a clue what they want to do with their life, right, uh, academically. But they're being forced into making that call by choosing subjects, you know? Yeah. And there's some wiggle room and you can opt out and in and out and others. But, I mean, like, how can it be beneficial to society to force people at that age to start saying, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? Yeah. and We it, should be sort of identifying that or there should be a mechanism to sort of say, well, you know, and maybe use... AI say that you know our markers show that you would be very good in this area or that area. I know guidance teachers do some of that, but it's really basic, you know. Um, and I kind of enjoy sometimes asking people of that age what are they going to do because they just get this blank expression. Because how the hell do they know? I, I think we, we we've been teaching people things that they should me- memorize, and that's like our entire school system is teaching people how to memorize things. And what we should be doing is teaching people how to. Um, approach things how to yeah. how to problem solve how to love themselves how to grow things like that i think those are the kind of things we should be teaching but the idea of teaching people like memory tests as our, our primary form of uh, it's quite know, literally it's, been it's, one of the key downfalls to the use of the irish language for an example yeah. absolutely you know, yeah and that's just in language let alone when you start getting into to maths what do you want to do i'm gonna ask what do you want to do when you grow up what are you going to do with your uh, ai phd is it in a- efficacy yeah it's in ethics so um Right now, it's a bit of the wild, wild west out there. Like I kind of mentioned, uh, the different uses that AI has, it's it's it's, it's significant. Um, and so right now, the EU are, are uh, working on this AI Act, which will be legislated I don't, probably this year. And I worry about that. I worry that they don't understand it or its potential and they're, they're saying, right, we need to do something. I think it's really important to get that right. You know, there's a lot of things coming through that you have to get right. We don't want to rush to introduce it. We need people like you having yeah. an input into well, that. Well, it's, I'm actually funded through the EU. So the EU have funded a lot of people in this area. There's actually people working since um, the, probably the last four years heavily on looking at what it is exactly that would make an AI system ethical. And they've come up with kind of seven areas, mm. including like impact on, you know, society, things like that, down to but fairness. How does that work then when they're being weaponized, right? So you could argue now what we have is we have... We have an AI system, and I know it goes beyond what I'm talking about here, but we've got an AI system, say, from Musk, which is uh, he's, it, it's, it's anti-woke, really, effectively, right? It's, it has bullying tools in it, jeering tools, right, trolling tools. And then we have, you know, Google, whatever they're trying to create, you know, obviously, but, but we've seen the problems with that. Um, so whilst it, 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 it can learn and it's self-learning, obviously we we still influence it. So we've got rival sort of AIs that will have a that would make the world look very different places, competing AIs. This is not like Betamax and VHS. They're gonna live in the same space. It's gonna be really interesting, stroke scary. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's not gonna be a quick change. 
the AI Act will be something like GDPR for businesses. It'll come out with like um, kind of restrictions on how AI systems can be designed, how they can be trained, where the data can be collected from. Like right now, you know, the, the, the data can be very easily collected. You know, if, if you're on a call to a contact center, in some cases, when they say uh, your call will be recorded for uh, you know, educational training purposes. In, in some cases, that training is AI, AI training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. And, awesome. and and so what the AI is doing is it's learning all our biases. It's it's learning all of our, to learning all of our flaws. And then people are working to actively try to fix some of those things. You know? mm. And if you just want to know how good it can be, it's just and I would say it's in the wider scale of things really basic. Just look at how your uh, the algorithm works on TikTok. It's yeah, remarkable. for sure. Do you still get the ADHD videos, or have you moved on? I've tried to move on from them, but I do get them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. And do you, uh, when you self-identify as ADHD, obviously you have to for the purpose of this uh, interview. Do you prefer the neurodiverse? Uh, if you feel you need to t tell people, or what way do you? Does it matter? What, what do you mean, sir? Like, so if I said to you, uh, if I said, if you said, if I said to you, oh, this, uh, tell me something about you, mm -hmm. uh, and you wanted to talk about that, would you say, well, I'm neurodiverse, or would you say I've got ADHD? Uh, I would say I have ADHD, I guess. Yeah, okay, I'm not, no, not too familiar. Yeah, just yeah, understand, yeah. I just yeah. like to learn the language as yeah. I go. Uh, Louise McCormick, thank you very much for joining us uh, on that wide ranging convo, I suppose you could say. Um, do you have a big presence on social media? If, do you provide any info for people, or are you more a consumer at this point? Um, I, I some some followings on LinkedIn maybe right, check but, out yeah. Louise McCormick see what she's got alright take care uh, we'll be back with more after these the county's number one talk show the 9 till noon show on Highland Radio Sheena Noel Design, formerly the Fabric Centre, Letterkenny, is now open in Bunkrana with a beautiful new studio ready to welcome you. With a vast fabric and wallpaper library, we deliver beautiful curtains, Roman blinds and upholstery. Motorised blind specialists. We have the inspiration to finish your home. Contact us on 083 3781 871 or check out our social media and website sheenanoeldesign.com for more. BNS Credit Union, your money's friend. Helping dreams come true from start to end. For renovations, weddings or a degree. Where the ones you can trust, come and see. Planning a wedding or a holiday spree. Or maybe a car for adventures to be. BNS Credit Union, we've got your back. With loans tailored for your life's track. Visit bnscu.ie. Your journey starts. BNS Credit Union, where dreams depart. Join us today and let's make it right. With BNSCU, your future's bright. BNS Credit Union Limited is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Skoda cars are made for exploring Ireland. But let's add more style, more sexiness, more French. Skoda Fabia, Scala and Kamek models are available in the Monte Carlo range. Black exterior details, excusez-moi, sports seats and bumpers, enchanté, and carbon decor. So chic. Order your new 2024 Skoda with more je ne sais quoi at skoda.ie. Skoda, let's explore. Your local Skoda dealer is DMG Motors, Clare Road, Donegal Town. Telephone 074 97 21396 or visit dmgmotors.ie. Mr. Blue Skies, tell us why. The Euro Millions jackpot is an estimated 60 million euros. Play responsibly in store, in app, or at lottery.ie. The National Lottery. It could be you. Are the signs of ageing creeping up on you? Are you not happy with the way you look or feel? At Letterkenny Medics Private Clinic, we're here to help you. Offering Botox anti-wrinkle injections, derma fillers, skin bio injections, Botox treatment for grinding and clenching teeth, hyperhidrosis that aids excessive sweating. Let our doctors help bring back your confidence and look after what is important to you. To see what real results really look like, book your immediate appointment with no waiting time at letterkennymedics.ie Letterkenny Medics, we listen if you want to talk. Have you entered our €10,000 home makeover draw? If the answer is yes, you are now automatically entered into our extra cash giveaway. If the answer is no, then now is the time to enter. Grey Qs will be ringing one lucky person on Friday the 5th of April, giving you the chance to win €2,500 in cash. That's not all. You will still have a chance of winning in our main draw of a €10,000 home makeover in association with Foyan Company, plus €5,000 in cash. Get your ticket now at highlandradio.com. 
Not sure where to start with your smart meter? Sign up to a Home Electric Plus smart meter price plan from Electric Ireland to see how much energy your appliances are actually using. Track your usage monthly, daily or even hourly and get tips and advice on how to use less. It's a smart start to controlling your energy usage. To sign up, search Electric Ireland Home Electric Plus. Smart meter and online account required. Features available after four months. T's and C's apply. See electricireland.ie. Introducing Kia's brand new offer, 0% finance on new and used electric cars, including a free home charger for any EV purchased. To experience what it's like to drive an electric car, we will give you an electric car for 72 hours plus our ESB card so you can charge for free. Check out this offer at imotors.ie. I've been surfing all morning at FlemingLTD.com. To find out about Fleming doors, Fleming steel and Fleming coatings and their full range of products. So come surfing with me at FlemingLTD.com. Fleming, 91 48 234. There's more furniture than ever on display in the extended showroom at McGinley's Furniture Letter Kenny. More sofas and suites, more bedroom and dining room furniture, and much more occasional furniture. If you're adding to your home or making some changes, call into McGinley's Furniture, Port Link, Business Park, Port Road, Lettery Kenny, or visit McGinley'sFurniture.com. Our next guest on the programme is Professor John Nolan, who is Director of the Nut- Re- Nutrition Research Centre, Ireland Southeast Technological University, based in Waterford. Good morning, Professor. How are you getting on? Good to have you on the show. Good, good morning, Greg. Never better. Thanks for the opportunity to speak with you. No, no problem. And people will be able to hear from you in person. We'll tell them about that a little later on. But just more interested in the your, your background, well, most interested in your uh, groundbreaking research Um that uh, talk to me about it. It's about nutrition and, and the benefit of our brain and eye health. Yeah, exactly. So I'm a nutritional biochemist, Greg. So I, I for 25 years, I've been working with nutrition and humans. And my interest was always about human function, how well we can be, how healthy we can be. I have particular interest in sports. So vision, um, when I started my PhD, I was very interested in visual functions, but I started working in an area called age-related macular degeneration, which is, as you may know, is the leading cause of blindness in in the developed world. And essentially with age-related macular degeneration, um, people lose their central vision because if you think of the eye as a camera, at the back of the eye, we have an area called the retina, which is like the film of the camera. The very center part of that is called the macula that does most of the work of our vision. So essentially, it receives all the light from the front of the eye and it transmit transmits an electrical signal to the brain. And we and expect we it to do an awful lot of work uh, across an awful long time as well, too, without yeah, maybe yeah. consciously saying, what can we do to, you know, to grease the, grease the cogs? Well, I, it's a really important point, Greg, because, you know, you hit the nail on the head. We're living longer than we are supposed to. Um, aging is a wonderful success story, but it's only successful if we can retain our function. So I suppose our research identified that at this tissue, there are nutrients there, and these nutrients are called carotenoids. And carotenoids um, are basically plant-based pigments. So when you look at healthy foods, plant-based foods, and you look at the colors in those foods, there's these active micronutrients called carotenoids. There's 700 of them in nature. In a typical diet, there's about 50. But we identified that at the eye, there's only three of these carotenoids. And there's a carotenoid called lutein, zeaxanthin, and mesozeaxanthin. So basically, they come from, from plants, essentially. And when they are concentrated at the back of our eye, they're called macular pigment. And that's a pigment that's protective. It's like a sunscreen in the back of the eye. And what we know is as we get older, this pigment decreases in its concentration, so we have less of it. And we know that people who are high risk of developing age-related macular degeneration, we know that they have a deficiency in it. And what our science has shown is that when we provide these nutrients, lutein, zeaxanthin, and mesozeaxanthin, um, which we source from marigold flowers from Mexico, um, so we created a formulation essentially. And we were funded by the European Research Council, the European government, to run major clinical trials called the CREST trials. And essentially, we identified that when we supplement patients with age related macular degeneration with this uh, uh, nut- nutritional supplement called MacuPrime, 
we can greatly in re- increase the macular pigments and we can enhance their visual functions. Mm. So in a disease where they normally lose their central vision, we've actually changed what happens. We give them better vision. So, so that, but that I mean, like you figured this out through your research, right? But the body already knows it, doesn't it? Because it knows it knows how to, once it's consumed, uh, I'm, I'm speaking in real layman's terms here, but you know what I'm saying. It knows where yeah. to send it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it, it you, yeah. you know, nature's already figured this out. Uh, the body's we're, very clever. Yeah, that's, and, that's and the point. You, yeah. yeah, the body's very clever. And imagine that we, from using, for example, spinach or, um, you know, the, the lovely colour you see in egg yolks, that the body is working to take those micronutrients and, and place them in a really tiny portion of our body that's so essential to how we live. And you're absolutely right. And these pigments are concentrated at the eye, you know, in higher amounts than anywhere else in the body. And the reason why they're good for us, they're like I I mentioned sunscreen, so they're an antioxidant, that's one thing. The other thing they do is they help us use the light that comes in, the visible lights that come in from the visible um, spectrum. We're able to use those lights and there we can enhance vision. So our work has extended beyond even disease. Mm. We work now with athletes as they get ready for sporting performance at high level so we can enhance normal visual function so that's quite remarkable and and is this something really we should be aware of throughout our lives so that we ensure that we are naturally ingesting this stuff and the body's doing its work um or or like is it is it better to take it through supplements at a certain age or what what's the the best case scenario there great question so look we we must try and do it throughout our life when we see a, when we see the first food we receive actually from our mother breast milk is is the colostrum is yellow because of these same nutrients so nature wants us to have them straight away i suppose it's comparable to saying we don't want to wait till we're sunburned before we put on our sunscreen so we have to get in front of this and um and that's what we're able to do with these targeted supplements we of course we promote healthy living healthy lifestyle all these plant based foods but one of the challenges we have now, Greg, is we're not getting enough from normal foods. We have this devolution of the good stuff that's mm. in foods. And, and what really worries me too, uh, even you know, beyond what we're talking now, is if you and and I'm no saint in this regard too, because I know how difficult parenting is, right? But if you mm. go into a restaurant uh, and you look at the kids' menu or you look at what our children are eating, it's all brown. It's, yeah. you know what I mean? It is brown. And as I say, I'm not here saying that, you know, my kids have done, I know it's the reality. And sometimes we just choose the path of least resistance. But there was greens on my plate when I was younger. There was carrots. I was, you know, if I didn't eat them, I wasn't getting food the next time, right? But you look around now and and, and an awful lot of children's food is just brown. Yeah, that's a really good point. And if there's no colour in it, it doesn't have the good stuff. Um, and, you know, I'm glad you asked about when should we do it, because when we look at like optometry, for example, now optometrists are not just about spectacles, it's about health. And we need our eye doctors, our optometrists across the world to be proactive in this kind of preventative enhancing mm. uh, area. And um, the other thing I'll say is, you know, remarkably and almost by mistake, we discovered that what we were able to achieve in the in the eye for vision played itself into the brain and, and cognitive function. Um, because the same, if you think of the retina, it's, it, it is the seeing part of the brain. So it's part of the central nervous system. So the discoveries we had in the eye led us into work into brain health. And what we did in, in that instance was we identified um, in a major study in Ireland called the TILDA study, the Irish Longitudinal Study on Aging, that if we were to take, say, 5,000 people, which we did, randomly selected from the population and measure their these carotenoid pigments, and then you measure their cognitive ability, so their memory, their attention, their reaction time, and so on. Those individuals in society with high carotenoid scores, which we can measure now in the skin and so on, um, have significantly better cognitive functions than individuals. Mm-hmm. Th- and this is cross-sectional evidence. So that was really nice data. And then that led us on to actually work with patients with Alzheimer's disease, where we identified that they have this major deficiency. And we were able to fix that. We combined the carotenoid um, carotenoid antioxidants with omega-3 fatty acids because the brain is mostly fat and the good fats in the brain is DHA, which we typically get from fish. Again, we're not consuming enough fish in, in our diet at all. Um, so DHA is a very important. So essentially combining the fish oil um, with the carotenoids, we were able to develop a different formula, and um, which achieved we achieved a patent for 
for the co-management and management of neurodegenerative diseases, including Alzheimer's disease. So this is something that we're very, very proud of. And it's something that we hope and we can see now can be used successfully in the co-management of these terrible mm. life changes. And I presume also, too, if you, if you took a cross-section of society, um, there would be variances on people's ability to get the goodness from food and put it into the right place as well. Some people, are, the, the body's going to be less efficient at that than, than others are, uh, which is sort of an add-on to, to, to the lifetime diet. What's the cost like, though? Because this is sort of heading in that direction, if, you know, if, we're, if we're talking about you know the development of... Uh, we're talking about the development of, of, I don't know if they're called medicines or supplements, uh, you know, that would be, you know, beneficial to eye health or for, for brain health. I mean, is it is it only for the rich? Are they beyond the means no, of I mean, most? Unlike pharmaceutical treatments, which are typically only for the risk, risk or those who have health insurance, um, you know, preventative food targeted food supplement intervention is affordable. Um, I don't know the exact cost, but you're looking at less than a cup of coffee. I think it's, as they say in America, less than a dollar a day. One of the challenges we have in, in the food supplement industry, in my view, is to differentiate food supplements that have a scientific evidence base, so essentially have been tested and demonstrated to work. That's one piece. The second piece is the quality. And that's why with the Macuprime and the Remind supplement for Alzheimer's disease, those companies which have a partnership with our university are committed to that type of quality mm -hmm. where they, they embark on continued testing of, of the food supplement, where they make sure that it's supplement certified so it's stable over its shelf life. About 70% of supplements in the in the high street or in the pharmacy don't have anything near their label claim. The regulation is really poor in this yeah. regard. And, and also, too, it's almost like a shot, shooting something with a shotgun. Like It's like a million things in the one tablet. And I don't know. Uh, I've tried it before and I never felt any better for it because you just feel like you're reading it and goes, it's got this, that, then, 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 better for everything. You take it for a month and, and you go, well, what was that about? It made my pee yellow. Yeah, and that's... that's I don't mean to be crude, soluble. but you know what I mean? That's no. just how it feels for me sometimes. I feel like... Yeah, and you're right. I, they're water-soluble. And, and, and what you can do is overflood your system with too many of the stuff that... I mean, we should revert back to normal diet if we can. The difference here is with carotenoids, we're not getting enough from our diet. And mm. that's why at our science, we were very strict and careful not to flood the the food supplement with everything. We targeted at specific tissues, mm -hmm. knowing the exact micronutrients are there. We concentrated those and we can provide those in a way that we can change. And we've measured this change. Yep. It takes about six months to change. But the greatest challenge is uh, is actually uh, people trusting it, not trusting it in in, an, in a negative way, but to buy into it, right? Because so say you were on here talking about Botox and you could say, you know, I can put four pricks in your forehead and in three days this will have happened right you know people go yeah. oh, okay right that's that's that i'm not endorsing that i'm just giving an example of, of, of an yeah. intervention that's quick but you're trying to sell people uh not you are we're talking here about something where people have to have a buy into it don't they because they, they're not going to necessarily see something immediately so they have to trust trust the science trust the people uh and, and the benefits will follow is the argument they will so. yeah no, i totally agree you're changing tissue level and then and we're depending on a functional change but the good news is that that is very measurable now and it's very noticeable it's measurable there's, for the first time ever there's a device actually now that's been used in pharmacies it was developed by a professor from utah I know quite well, mm -hmm. and it's called a life meter. And this device measures the carotenoid score. So at the very least, the patients who do uh, buy into it will be able to detect their change with appropriate testing at this pharmacy. It's non-invasive. It's very quick to do. But also, I'll tell you, Greg, that you know we have thousands of patients now across the world that have been on this intervention. And once they go on it, they will never come off it because they do see the benefits. And there's so many people now listening to your station who are so well worried, understandably, about vision loss. Maybe they have a family history of age-related macular degeneration and even more so with Alzheimer's disease. And by the way, I'm not saying this is like a silver bullet or a cure. It's not. It's none of that. This is a part of the co-management. It's, it, it's sensible. It's biologically sensible. It's biologically plausible that if we enrich these particular safe target micronutrients, mm. 
we're, we're all going to do better. All right, so life meter screening, you just heard the professor reference there, um, is taking place in HealthWise pharmacies in May from next uh, month. So that's the, 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 the life metering screening you talk of. Uh, Mackey Prime reminds supplements, they're also available in your pharmacy, and, and a lot of people have a good relationship with the pharmacist. Uh, they can go in and have a conversation with them about the screening uh, and also the availability of these uh, supplements. But just generally, in, in terms of good eye health, um, you know, because I, I would be conscious of, of my eye, yeah. eye health, but I would be, I can't get into it because it's, <laughs> I'll be sectioned if I start talking about it. It took me six years to go to an optician. But anyway, Mackey Prime, right? It, 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 is, that, is that for general eye health or, or yes. to protect the back of the eye? And like, is it plausible that someone who would take this supplement could avoid macular degeneration or does it lessen chances or, or what does the science say the whole the whole point of it is preventative the the big major study was what we call a morphological study we're looking at disease progression so if you enrich these particular nutrients you stop the rate at which the disease progresses but for me that everything points to preventative preventative if you're a healthy person now who's well worried or maybe you have a family history of this condition and you just want to have better vision Issues like driving at night, glare disabilities, all of these issues which we experience even as we move into our 30s, 40s and 50s. We've all experienced those, these photo stresses. We can we can get a win straight away. Mm -hmm. But the real win is the preventative win. Okay. Um, what happens when your stomach can't deal with vegetables, asks a listener. Yeah, it's a lot of a lot of people have that have that issue. I mean, taking these supplements, they're tiny. It's one supplement. It's basically twenty two times the concentration of the carotenoid that you'd get from a standard daily intake, even if you're super healthy eating spinach and kale and stuff. So you know, I try to eat vegetables, but I take the supplement myself every day. Um, do you have a view on what the best diet is? Asks listener: keto, vegan, etc. When it comes I'm to uh, health. Yeah, I'm all for balanced, a bit of everything. I think if it comes from the ground, I think if we're if it's available to us, um, mixing everything is important to me. I I think going to extremes and any type of diet doesn't have longevity and doesn't give us the best health. We're well, we to take have. something from all different types of food. So if you exclude those food types, invariably you're going to be deficient in something. I mean, that's I'm not a scientist, yeah. but I mean, so that's I the logical. Uh, I take MacuShield or MacuPro Advanced every day. Is that any help? Are these so that's an important point. The, the the supplement we developed at Waterford is called Macu Prime. And it is important to distinguish that because as I said, I can't comment on the effectiveness of supplements that haven't been used in clinical trials. So it's not Macu Shield, it's Macu Prime that, that we've tested. Um so and the other point, as I said, is I would I would tell your listeners to look out for supplements that have an evidence base but also have a supplement certified stability program. Are those carotenoids, which are the, the good stuff in the supplement, they are in the first place and are they stable mm. over time? I mean, a lot of people spend a lot of money taking stuff over a long period of time. Yeah. And I think we have the responsibility as consumers to ensure that what we're doing is is worthwhile, not pointless at all. Um, can you take this if you're on blood thinners? Yes, there's no contraindications at, at all. Nothing like these are the safest. We have no adverse effect contraindications even across populations now with over 10 years of, of pathology associate testing with it all right They're okay great. you're speaking in the russell penna have you been to the Ross penna hotel no i've, ne well, I've never i've never been to Donegal. You're i'm looking for forward a treat. To it. no you're uh you're gonna have a lovely time uh april 6th it's speaking at the gp clinical society spring meeting at the russell penna um i presume that's the audience has already been established for that. Um, My understanding is it's general practitioners yeah, exactly. and ophthalmology as yeah. well, so that would be great. All right. Hopefully they all behave themselves. I'm sure they would. Good boys <laughs> yeah. and girls up there. All right. Okay. Yeah. Listen, thanks very much, uh, Professor John Nolan. It's been an interesting conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, and of course, uh, you can take that for what it's worth and um, do your own research, dig in a little bit and see if that is something for uh, you. Uh, the live meter screening is in your HealthWise pharmacies through May. Mackie Prime and Remind supplements available in pharmacies as well. Um, as I say, that might be life-changing for some or completely disregarded by others i do not know right we're going to take a break for the weather we'll be back with some of uh, your comments after these
The Big Easter Sale is now on at Cooney's Home Interiors with 20% off all departments, excluding existing offers. That's huge discounts on all suites, tables, beds and accessories. We have many X display models in beds and sofas all reduced to clear. Treat yourself to a bargain at the Easter Sale in Cooney's Home Interiors, Letterkenny Retail Park. Sale ends Sunday the 7th of April. Get ready to experience the ultimate tribute to the king of rock and roll. The Elvis Spectacular Show is coming to Encourage Hotel on Saturday, April 27th. Tickets priced at €25 Euro are available from Eventbrite and Encourage Hotel Reception. Hi, Paddy here at Shane Conley Cars in Donegal Town. Are you looking to upgrade your car? With Shane Conley Cars, you'll find mix and models for every budget. Great finance options and may also accept trade-ins. Check out shaneconleycars.com or call in to us at Shane Conley Cars from Lonnerher Road, Donegal Town. Highland Radio weather updates brought to you by McElhenney's. With over 50 years of serving the community in Donegal, McElhenney's is proud to be part of every moment, big and small. Support local, shop McElhenney's Bally Buffet. Okay, you know, let's have a look at uh, that weather forecast for you. If I'm on the right outbreak, I believe I am. And uh, it's better up here than it is down south. Uh, today, plenty of dry weather with a mix of cloud, bright spells and a few showers, hit and miss. Temperatures 10 to 12 degrees. Now, largely dry tonight, but outbreaks of rain and drizzle will spread from the south during the course of the night. Temperatures 5 to 8 degrees. And tomorrow, cloudy, rather wet day. It's expected with outbreaks of rain and drizzle. Highest temperatures generally ranging from 8 to 10 degrees in moderate to fresh northerly winds. Um, do you remember the April we had? Um, just I can only timeline it this way. It was when the lockdown happened. Uh, do you remember that April? There was like three weeks, um, three weeks that pretty much ate outside every single day. It was fantastic. <clears throat> Um, but it doesn't look like that's happening this April. Great conversation with Louise on ADHD. Would love to hear more from her on AI. Indeed, might get a separate conversation on that because th uh, as, as I'm very, very interested in uh, Louise's uh, story and her experience of um, a diagnosis late in, relatively late in life for ADHD, but also her work in AI sounds fascinating as well. AI is going to be uh, mentioned quite a bit during the teachers' conference, which is uh, which are ongoing today, of course. Uh, any man identifying as a woman is always a man, says the listener, but that person believes they are a woman as well. You know, that's that's uh, they have their belief, so they believe they are a transgender woman, and you believe that they'll always be a man. Great news about Simon Coveney going. Let's uh, get Helen McEntee out next. She's not fit for purpose. I can see Helen McEntee being moved out of... Um, Justice, I think she's done a lot of work uh, on domestic violence and other issues, but I think there's quite a few would like to see her move to a different department. Two years ago, I had to call an ambulance. We're out in the country and we're waiting for an ambulance as ambulance drivers and men and women are not allowed to leave incoming patients unattended. This means that ambulances are delayed indeed, and that's something we've discussed many times over the years, uh, teams being tied up. At one point last late last year, there were eight uh, uh, ambulances in a queue to get into ED, um, which was really, I think, one of the critical points that triggered the GPs and consultants coming out as they did. How many of the older people, the media scare off the road today, are the older people not just as sharp as they used to be? I find older people to be excellent drivers. Uh, maybe they don't go sometimes as quick as you might like, though uh, they all drive differently. I don't know why older people might be scared off the road. Um very competent, the older people I know, and I'd get a slap if I said that to them. I was listening to the Weed Donegal Mammy and the following guest regarding their experience with Letterkenny Hospital and the HSC in general. Just to say that having spent months in Letterkenny Hospital being treated for serious COVID, I can categorically say that the doctors and nurses in the COVID ward saved my life, so I am forever grateful. However, the system is broken from local practice all the way up. Not all of it is to do with the lack of resources, although that is a major issue. Some of the problem is down to time management from GP level up. There's a hospital in the Midlands that has similar resources and population as Letterkenny and has no trolley or admission issues. Hospital management should be taken there and trained in hospital management. There are issues... Well, you see, 
hospital management is fine, but if you want to get your consultants to work seven days a week or to be on call seven days a week and not to stick to nine to five, you know, that's the, the new consultant's track, uh, co contract. A, a hospital manager can't compel them to do that either. So, you know, the consultants themselves are going to have to be a bit more flexible with the time. We can't have a five-day-a-week, nine-to-five hospital either, I suppose. Uh, but anyway, the caller goes on to say hospital management should be taken uh, and trained. There are issues with people attending the ED unnecessarily and they can't get a GP appointment. This is due to certain clinics closing phone lines once a quota of calls have been answered and also by the mountain of paperwork GPs must complete after each patient. Surely administration could be approached better and better systems from clinic to triage to admission could be examined. Perhaps a time management expert should be looking into it. Thank you for that uh, very well thought out uh, comment there. And that is uh, where we have to leave it on the Nine Till Noon show. Time for one more, actually. My son, who has complex medical needs, was in the ED on Wednesday. He was taken in and he had to wait, but he was seen quickly. The lovely doctor kept coming back in, checking on him. I've had bad experiences in the ED, but everyone who goes into ED has a bad experience. I just want to highlight the good work the ED do. We're not saying that ED across the board is poor but we do also have to give people an opportunity to talk of their experiences as well and as I say this is in support of the staff down there not against them just to be clear that's where we have to leave it